Sorry, guys. Okay, hey, rock and roll. Okay. Yeah, right. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Okay, come on. Let's go. Morning. morning. Places to go, people to see. Thank you. Another one of those. Good days. morning, and welcome to our regular meeting of February 11th, 2020. We're going to start out with an invocation by Pastor Randy Bazay. Right? with uh, Bayside Community Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand if you're able. Thank you, and good morning. Would you bow your heads as we pray? Our Father, we're coming to you today, and we just want to say thank you for, for your many blessings in our lives. First of all, for our ability to be here today, the health that we have, for life itself, and the uh, ideas and the, the understanding of what we have to accomplish your purpose today. As we gather today, it is, it is very well known that, that we should honor and also pray for our authorities. And so we pray for this city and we pray for this county. We pray for the leaders and especially for this chamber here today. God, I just pray for, for them as they make decisions that you would give them wisdom to make good decisions for the betterment of this community. Give them a keen understanding as they try to discern what is best as they, they make decisions here today. God, give them peace and harmony with one another as they're trying to work together, even when there perhaps might be disagreements regarding the agenda today. Amen. And uh, most importantly, God, give them peace as they perform their duties to serve this community that we love so well. Now, God, as this agenda is before them today, we just ask the elite and government and, and all the decisions that are before them today, and we thank you that uh, there'll be a lot accomplished today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> That's yes, ma'am. Can you send us all the email that you got from Brandon? All right. Um, we have one item that is scheduled for uh, time certain. That is item number 40, the execution of donation agreement between University of South Florida Board of Trustees and Manatee County for property located at Crosley Estate, Braden, Florida. Um, are there other updates to the agenda? Madam Administrator. Madam Chairman, members of the board, there is one update to this meeting's agenda. It's a change to the consent agenda. It's under utilities and it would be item 38, execution and recording of agreement for the time payment with Hutch Holdings LLC. The first paragraph of the agreement was updated to read. This agreement is entered into by and between Hutch Holdings, comma, LLC, comma, a Florida limited liability company. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Whitmore is not going to be with us this morning. She had a conflict. She has a meeting of her, I believe it's her elderly affairs. Medical. 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 Medical, medical board. Okay, that's right. Her medical board, so she had to attend that because um, it's um, something she's been appointed to. So, and we have a very light agenda today, but you never know what can happen any given day up here. All right, so um, we have a request by commissioners for items to be pulled from the consent agenda. Commissioner Baugh. Yes, item, I believe it's, let me look and make sure, item 17. Ah, I had that pulled as well. Oh, you did? Good. Okay, thank you. Item number 17. Anything else, commissioners? Okay, well, that item will come up at 11.30, just so everyone is aware. When we call something, it comes up at 11.30. All right, so this morning we're going to start with awards and presentations. The first award, we have presentation of the February 2020 Employee of the Month Award to Donald Sudbury. So for all those folks that are helping us recognize our Employee of the Month, please come forward. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Mark Simpson, your, your Utilities Department Deputy Director. Um, I'm very honored today to produce, uh, to present the Employee of the Month Award to uh, Don Sudbury. Don has uh, been with us for 11 years. Um, he came to us well-established after a 
um, successful career in the private sector and uh, started with us in our utilities department in the, as a water maintenance technician and looking for a change of direction for what he was doing and uh, clearly, quickly established himself as a top-notch performer in, in that field. He took extra classes, went out of his way, um, study on his own, create, to, to increase his licensure through the step through the career ladder. And in short five years, he had, actually four years, he had, he had got to the point where he had maxed out where he could go as a utilities water maintenance technician. He worked on our valve crew for the department, um, setting goals and setting standards for the number of valves that he turned and operated to maintain our system. Um, and setting those goals so high and those standards so high that there's still other folks are still trying to reach them. He's been a model employee in distribution. But uh, six years ago, he went and started working with our um, water conservation section as a water compliance officer. Again, he applied himself, took the courses, got certified, um, uh, got his licensure for that. He, he's our code enforcement officer. He also works for our water conservation and also on the backflow certification program and backflow compliance issues. Um, he's a wonderful employee. He's got a great work ethic that um, few have been able to match. Um, it's uh, a real tr tr treasure for us to have somebody that you bring in and you never quite know for sure how they're going to work out. Somebody who's been established and has an established work practice that they've uh, had over the years came to us and he's been just a blessing for us to have. And so I'm very proud and honored to present this to Don Sudbury as our um, Employee of the Month. I'll read this in as Manatee County Government Employee of the Month presented to Donald Sudbury in recognition of your outstanding performance, productivity, and dedicated service to Manatee County Government. Presented this 11th day of February 2020. Signed by our Chairman Betsy Benack. Don. <laughs> Olga Wallan is going to step up. Yeah. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, commissioners, uh, county administrator. I am a supervisor of Don. I was lucky enough to steal him in two tw two 2012 from distribution. So I want to thank you for recognizing him because he definitely outstanding employee. He is um, very kind and caring when it comes to people's cases. You know, he provides this one-on-one -on -one interaction in person, which we cannot provide through the phone or email with customers. So um, despite the nature of Don's work, let's face it, no one wants to see a compliance enforcement officer in their property, right? No. So we still get a um, constant compliment for Don. And he really cares, and he evaluates situation on case-by-case -case basis. In their particular situation, he provides option what people can do to come to compliance and just provides this win-win solution for people. So it's why it's very rewarding, you know, to have Don, someone like Don in our section. And um, of course, he'd been outstanding employee for all these years he'd been with us. And Juan, I really nominated him, you know, for this nomination. For his particular role, you know, he one who helped us recognize a particular situation with one model of backflow preventers. And we don't maintain it. It's like a federal list which provided by uh, uh, University of California. And he one who figured out one model, new model, failing rapidly in Manatee County. And usually the last 10 to 20 years, and this one, one, two years, and they fail. So it's a necessary burden on our customers to repair. A lot of them not repairable. They have to be replaced. So he worked with Wilkins. You know, so now we have a pilot program going with um, they redesign their model with different materials. We have them throughout the county, like 18 of them. We test them quarterly. So it's a process, but in the meantime, we reached out, thanks to Don, to plumbing professionals. We not install them in Manatee County. They not disapproved officially, but we reached out to plumbers. They're not installing it. So we're trying to protect our customers this way, so for a necessary burden. And Don's role in this process was 
above and beyond his job description. So I just want to make sure you know, you know, that you have employees like Don, which really care, you know, because it's really not if reflect on him personally, but he really cares about our customers. So thank you, Don. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to all you commissioners for all the support you give us when backflow issues do come up, because they do come up when we inventory subdivisions and stuff, and we do appreciate all y'all's help. And I appreciate the utility departments from the head all the way down. We have a great team there, and they all work to make the public as happy as they can. So thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Commissioner Bob? Yeah. Interesting <clears throat> comment, I have to tell you, that you made, um, you know, it's not a matter of us making your job easier for you. It's what you do for us as commissioners, for the people that we represent. And I got to tell you, you're worth a million dollars, just so you know. <laughs> you, you do help the citizens. You all do. I mean, that's a tough job you have. And it takes a very special personality for it. And so God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry, you had some comments? Um, I had the pleasure of presenting the award surprise to him with his team back there but also wanted to thank your family for being here uh, you know you dedicate a lot of time to the county which means you're not around as much as you probably would like so we thank you and for helping to protect the citizens and the water quality area we appreciate it thank you thank you it's so it's great to see somebody come from the um, private sector and bring their expertise and, and share it with their fellow employees and, and to be the kind of employee that everyone can count on. So we thank you for your service to Manatee County for being here. And congratulations on your award. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have something that I am really glad some folks took the um, initiative and put together, and this is a presentation, a certificate of recognition to Ben and Rebecca Cookie Jordan. And uh, for those of you who know the Jordans, you know how much they love this community, how much they have put into it, how much they've been involved, and um, you know things have. We all know that north of the river is an incredible growth area. But with folks like the Jordans, it's, it's, we're retaining of a lot of our home community feel. So I want to say thank you to them. And uh, Commissioner Trace is going to um, read the award and hand it out. She got the lucky draw today. <laughs> I want to say a couple words before I read this recognition. Um, How long have you been here, Ben? About 20 years. I've known Ben 20 years. Couldn't stand it when I first met him. <laughs> I thought uh, he came down here and basically was trying to change parish, and he'd been here all of a half a second, and was telling <laughs> us what everything we did wrong, which we knew we did, we, which we kind of knew. Thought the only thing he did well was he married well. Uh, <laughs> but uh, over time, he had some very, very good ideas, and uh, I can't say all of us embraced him, but I was wrong. He was right. And he has a passion for this community that even some of us that have been here four generations have. He has some new ideas, and uh, we've embraced him, and he's done wonderful things. So I'm happy to call him a friend. We still argue about some of those <laughs> ideas, um, so I wouldn't say that. But I'm happy to call him friends now, and uh, more than happy to read this recognition. Ben and Rebecca Cookie Jordan have lived in Parrish, Florida since 1990 and advocate both community priorities and those of Manatee for the parish and North River citizens of Manatee County. They serve as members of the Parish Foundation, Inc., board of directors, and were part of the initial group to convey the old parish schoolhouse building from a county asset to the Parish Foundation, a not-for-profit organization. Ben and Cookie were instrumental in bringing community events to parish, the parish chili cook-off, and the annual Fort Hamer Bridge Run that have enjoyed years of success and enjoyment for Manatee County residents. Their leadership efforts and hard work with the Chili Cook-Off have resulted in donations of profits from this event to more than 25 not-for-profit organizations in Manatee County, in excess of 250,000 since 2011. Additionally, Ben and Cookie have served the parish and North River communities for many years on issues relating to growth and the effects of the developing residential and commercial area, while advocating for parish to maintain its rural charm and heritage. Their involvement with county, state, and federal agency include the Fort Hamer Bridge, the widening of U.S. Highway 301, the extension of county water and sewer services, establishment of landscape codes for a new development overlay district, 
and expansion and development of the Florida Railroad Museum property and parish. This certificate is presented to Ben and Cookie Jordan on this 11th day of February 2020 in recognition of their time, talent, and treasures to promote community in the parish area for the benefit of all past, current, current, and future residents of this community. Signed on this day by our chair, Betsy Benack. Y'all to say something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll go first. Um, I want to thank you all for this recognition. We appreciate it very much. Ben and I are not into honors and recognition. We do this because we love parish, we love our community, and we like what's happening to it, and we continue our, to work on it as much as we can. As you know, I do the Parish Village News, and every chance I get, we publicize the activities in our camp, part of the county. And we're happy that you all recognize the northeastern part of the county, north of the river. <laughs> it makes it very nice for us and all the things we're trying to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> I, I've come before you a lot of times, <clears throat> and usually don't have a tough time talking, but I really can't tell you how much I appreciate this. I appreciate your kind words, Bessie. <clears throat> Cookie and I are very blessed. We both grew up in Tennessee in small towns, and we both ended up working for IBM. And when we were working for IBM, we were in a lot of larger communities where it was very, very hard to get involved in anything. And we have felt so lucky when we found Parrish. I remember driving down Old Tampa Road and saying, please, Lord, let me like this golf course because I love this drive going down <laughs> Old Tampa Road. Uh, we, we found Parrish. And, and Parrish embraced us, and we can't thank it enough. One of the first people I met was Brother Bud Gillett, and we used to have breakfast uh, at least twice a month and just talk about what Parrish was like and what his vision was for it and everything. So uh, Commissioner Trace, commissioners, and everybody else that has something to do with this, we can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We've got some commissioners that want to say things. First, uh, Commissioner The chili cook-off is Saturday, apparently. March 7th. <laughs> Starts at 11. The parade is before then. Just want to make sure we all get in there and everybody comes down because that's how this guy had the great vision to make money for the parish community. That's great. Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you, Ben and Cookie, for being here. And thank you for everything that you've done for Parish. You know, I learned something today. I didn't know that you've only been here since 1990 mm -hmm. because been I thought forever. you had always been here. <laughs> I mean, I always um, referred to you guys as the king and queen of Parish, royalty, if you will, because everything Parish came back to you guys in some way. Cookie, the recipes in your newspaper, <laughs> I have so many that are cut out. So thank you for everything that you've done, and it's really good to acknowledge your service. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Bach. Yeah, you know, you guys, I mean, I know y'all are north of the river, but sometimes I think you're also like further out east, a little south. Uh, but you guys have been wonderful to me, I can tell you. Um, you've been good friends. Uh, you helped me when I was running for office. You helped me after I got elected uh, when I had so many questions, and I still do sometimes. And, you know, I just thank you guys for all that you've done for all of Manatee County. It, yes, you've hit Parrish the most, but, you know, it, it goes all over. So thank you, and, and this honor, you should have had it a long time ago. So congratulations on today. And Commissioner Johnson. Um, yeah, um... You know, I wish we could clone you all, yeah. you know, because I don't think there's any place in the county that wouldn't like to have the two of you living in their district because you're just great leaders and, and you're always level-headed, you know, and you listen to both sides of the arguments and we may not always agree on each ones, but you always walk away respecting, you know, your opinion and I think I always walk away respecting it greatly and, you know, and... Uh, you know, you've done a huge impact into this county in a relatively short period of time. And, you know, for that, you know, I think all of us up here on the on the commission thank you as do the rest of the citizens in Manatee County because, you know, you're, you're living in an area with a lot of growth and we need some level-headed thinking and you all bring that to the table. So I thank you. 
Yeah, I just want to say that um, you guys are a great example of what we're getting a lot of feedback here. Yeah, yeah. well, came on okay. Um, <laughs> you're a great example of what can be done if you want to get involved. And I know uh, I first met Ben when he wanted to get involved in some of the development issues. He would come and back when I was sitting out in the audience, and he would come and and speak his mind about what his concerns were. And that's very important. You know, it's it's what this community is based on: people being involved. And you guys have gotten involved. You've gotten involved in helping the community, not just in land use issues, but helping them move forward. You know, the schoolhouse project, that's just been a great project. It's really created a community center. And you've got, you know, you're, some of your great uh, parish board standing behind you all in their black shirts and unity. And we're, <laughs> we know that they're here to support you, but you guys all work together. So we really appreciate everything that you put into it. And you know what? You're just a message to everybody else. Get involved. Show up. We aren't always going to agree. We are going to have different opinions. But to be able to move the needle forward and keep our community in the quality of life, which is most important to, to keep our really, really wonderful quality of life, you've got to be involved. So thank you for everything you do. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, another group of uh, great folks here in their bright orange shirts. This is a presentation by Manatee County Search and Rescue, outlining the assets and capabilities this organization delivers to the citizens. Awesome. Morning. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners, Madam Chair, County Administrator, and County Attorney. My name is Joel Richmond, and I'm representing the Emergency Management Division. And we just wanted to say a few words about our support for our local Manatee County Search and Rescue Team. Uh, this dedicated group of volunteers not only saves the county a lot of time and money, but their existence benefits the public safety community here in Manatee County in many ways. They've all worked very hard to develop a program that suits a multitude of needs, and they're an outstanding group of people. Many of these individuals are responders working for local public safety agencies who devote what little free time they have to advancing the mission of Manatee County Search and Rescue in an effort to keep our residents and visitors safe. And just some of the few things they do for the Emergency Management Division alone, they assist in many of our you know, ICS and FEMA training courses. They help to staff large community events uh, with medical coverage. Uh, for example, the regatta event that just happened this weekend. Uh, they were there with their mobile response vehicles, their canines. I think you had your SUVs and pickups and a boat in the water. Is that correct? Uh, always had a rescue boat in the water, poised and ready to help. They're involved with the many exercises we conduct every year, including our first in-team exercises. They spend the day outside in the sun assessing patients and putting their different types of canines through their paces, uncovering victims from amidst the debris. So essentially, this group is always you know, willing and ready to help, and they deserve all the recognition and support that we can give them. Thank you. You. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair, fellow commissioners, Ms. County Administrator, County Attorney. My name is John Elwood, and I'm the Deputy Chief in charge of operations. And if you probably have seen my canine partner, Karma, is back with us again. <laughs> and last year, we gave you an overview of our capabilities and the things that we bring to the citizens of Manatee County and the cost savings that we do. And at your direction, you asked us to come back and give you a brief on what we did the previous year. So with that, I'd like to do that. So what I want to show you just real quick, we did a little promotional video for some of you that may be new or may just need a little refresher. And it just gives you just a brief overview of what we bring to you, Manatee. Manatee County, search and rescue, respond. Interop 4 for missing persons. Hey, I'm sorry, I'm TV One's responding.
So that just gives you a little bit of an overview of some of our assets. And you saw the large military vehicle that we have. That's one of our newest additions um, that allows us not only to respond. We Two weeks ago, we responded in Mayaka State Park because they had a hiker that was having a medical emergency, as well as our main purpose for that vehicle is for flood response. And we all know it doesn't flood in Manatee County. So um, <laughs> oh, yeah. for the 2019, 2019 statistics, uh, we had 24 missing person calls. Um, we had 35 special assignments that ranged a whole gamut. We attended 26 meetings. One of the things that we do is we attend the Manatee Emergency Operations Working Group every month, as well as the quarterly uh, community emergency response team meetings. We had 34 medical standbys in which Joel was very so aptly pointed out, one of which would be like the River Regatta, and we attend several other events in Manatee County to help provide medical coverage to ease the burden on EMS. Uh, we assisted several other agencies that anywhere from the U.S. Coast Guard to local law enforcement. Um, believe it or not, actually out and about as we're driving, we stop and assist disabled motorists, and we had 17, or 15 of those, and then we had 67 training sessions. We also had five marine responses, which we're not a primary or secondary responder, but we are a tertiary responder. Um, a couple of different times, both North River's boat and West Manatee's boat was down for mechanical issues, and we ended up being the primary responder, which was a great honor for us. Um, we've fielded six different informational requests from civic groups. Um, we've responded to 12 vehicle accidents, um, six public events, and we also had one abandoned person. But the biggest thing to look at is if you look at the bottom of the slide, you can see we had almost 3,200 hours, which equated to using the FEMA rate for a volunteer, almost a cost savings to the citizens of $80,000. And that is at zero cost to the taxpayer. We don't receive any financial contributions, as you well know, other than fundraising and donations. Um, so 2020 started off pretty quick out of the gate. We've had four missing person calls. Uh, if you saw the fire that West or, uh, Southern Manatee responded to with the apartment complex, they requested our canine assistance to where we brought our human remains detection dogs out. And because part of the building was collapsed, so to prevent firefighters becoming injured, um, they utilized our canines to check the structure to make sure that nobody had perished in the, in the building. And, you know, we're very happy to report that nobody lost their life because if you saw, it was a very rapidly developing fire. Um, that was the second time that we've responded to assist Southern Manatee on a fire basis, which is great for us. Um, you can just look at, I don't want to ramble on, but if you can just see it from the slide and plus you got that in your packet, 2020 has already started off and we're only two months into it. And a lot of that is through success breeds success, and these individuals that are here are very dedicated, but as well as our public safety partners that help support us. So some of the things that are new that, that were different from what we presented to you last year, we now have a new software. It's called 108 Systems, and if you're familiar with how 911 works with a computer data dispatch, this is kind of our version for ourselves. But one of the great things about this program is it provides analytics. So that's how we get the breakdown of our call volume. But what else it does is it can also show us target areas. If we see that there's a trend that we're having missing people, like say a retirement community, then we can do some community outreach and do some education, such as we talked to you about the Project Lifesaver program that we, that we have for people with some type of cognitive impairment, whether it's Alzheimer's, dementia, or autism. Um, we just recently appropriated a John boat from uh, the Florida Forest Service through their surplus program, and we're in the process right now of re refurbishing that vessel and painting it and then putting our graphics on it. We also uh, appropriated a, a hearse tool, or is affectionately known as a Jaws of Life. Not that, again, that we're a primary responder for auto extrications, but in the event that somebody else needs a tertiary response, we can do that. Um, we had two of our canines that were recently <coughs> certified uh, last year in human remains detection. Also, we appropriated a new, as you saw in the video, you saw the t uh, canine Tahoes that we appropriate from the sheriff's office, and we really want to say thank you to Sheriff Wells and Colonel Dennison. Uh, Colonel Dennison expresses his sincere regrets that he wasn't able to be here today. He was called away to a, a staff meeting, but he wanted me to relay to you all that if you have any questions at all as to the services we provide to the sheriff's office and the community, to please contact him directly. Um, he wanted me to make sure that I really stress that. We also changed our insurance carrier. We went to the Volunteer Firefighter Insurance Service, 
um, which gives us some unique abilities as opposed to a regular commercial carrier. Um, it helps to indemnify us and gives our, our members a worker's compensation equivalent of insurance. So in the event that one of our members gets injured, they don't have to pay out of pocket for their medical insurance that our insurance policy covers them, as well as our vehicles and other assets. And then we also just recently, uh, three months ago, we attended through Mike Williamson, and is Mike here if he is, raise his hand, that Parish Fire hosted a emergency vehicle operators course and uh, train the trainer in which we had two of our members go to that. So we were able to deliver that training in-house and save costs as opposed to having to piggyback on somebody else. So that's basically in a nutshell what I wanted to update you for what, what had transpired in 2019 and 2020. And I'd like to entertain any questions that the board may have. Any questions or comments, board members? And you know me. That's oh, okay. You know, I, I love it every year when you guys come um, because I think it's amazing that you do this on your own dime, basically. I mean, you don't look to the county. You don't look to any of us to, to support what all you do, and you do so, so much. So it just goes to show you, uh, you guys are talented. You have big, big hearts. Um, and I just can't thank you enough, uh, you know, for what you do and, and the difference that you do make. And, and I love the picture of the lab. I haven't, I've not met the lab. That's uh, actually, where's Deputy Webb at? That was actually his dog. Kevin used to be a member with us um, years ago. And that's Avery, and Avery has since passed away. But Aww. that's also, I, I put that up there. Not only is it a really cute picture, but that's also, you know, a legacy for Kevin's canine as well. I'm not surprised, Kevin not surprised all right well thank you so much for being here and please put it on your your calendar to be here every year because yes, it's so nice to see what you guys have done in the past year it's always so informative thank you thank you very much commissioner trace i just wanted to tell y'all thank you so much for your service i see kevin work as avery and i hadn't seen the avery in a while and got to make sense sorry really to hear about that kevin he used to always be overworking his dogs and stuff up and down 62 there so, but I just want to tell you, thank you for your service. Y'all are doing a great service to the county. Thank, thank you. you. And it looks like you bring people in and you train them. I think that's wonderful. And the community thanks you for everything that you're doing. Um, I know you guys are uh, partners with our EMS folks. Or good to see them all standing in support behind you. It's a little scary. They're all standing kind of almost at parade rest back there. Um, so uh, I think it's wonderful that you work together and work with our community. So thank you for being here and keep up the good work. And hopefully we'll keep the flooding down, the storms down. You know, we just got to stay positive, right? Yep, knock, yeah. knock on that. Uh, Knock on that for Micah. Okay. You can blame Tristan. That's Micah. he's the weatherman. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. We Thank appreciate you very much. it. Thank we appreciate you. your support. All right. Next, I, I need move, a. I move we accept the proclamations. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to adopt the proclamations. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes by motion passes. Our first proclamation is adoption of proclamation designating February 2020 as Black History Month in Manatee County. Come on down if there's someone here to accept the proclamation. Police dogs. I didn't know were shepherds. I didn't know he had lab like that. Beautiful. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, board members. Last year was my first time um, reading a proclamation as far as African American uh, Black Black History Month, and we do a lot nationally to acknowledge uh, Black history, but there's some things that have taken place here locally as far as black history. Um, and I often sit and wonder and think about where would African Americans would be based on some of the things that we've gone through over the time. Um, the Bellamy name itself, you know, is a part of black history, not only in Manatee County, but nationally, as far as my uncle breaking the color barrier, being the first African American to sign a football scholarship at the University of Miami. However, it's more to it than the sports. We think about the legendary Eddie Shannon, I think about Steve Lewis, individuals that have actually plowed the way in Manatee County 
A lot of times when we think about African American history, we also take it nationally. I have to think about the individuals that's impacted me here locally, individuals that's impacted our community and made a difference. And I think about the educators. I think about the walk that Mickey Preece has done. And I think about the walk that Johnny Hunter has done as far as in Temple News and, and been in, in individuals that have impacted our community in so many different ways. So when I stand here and I talk about a proclamation for Black History Month, I am representing the legacy that they have plowed before me. So it gives me great honor. I always stand and when I speak, I say I bring you honor from Bethune-Cookman College where we were taught to enter to learn and depart to serve. And this is a part of our African-American history. So again, it brings me honor. Luther Wilkins, a representative from my NAACP, is going to receive, is going to receive the proclamation and I'll, I'll read it. <clears throat> Proclamation, Board of, Man Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida. Whereas Black History Month dates back to 1926 and observes African American achievements and whereas Black History Month celebrates the achievements and contributions of Americans, African Americans in the United States. And whereas Black History Month is intent is not only to increase the knowledge of black history in black communities, but also to spread the issue to American society as a whole. And whereas all members of the nation are affected by black history because it is a part of American history, which should be celebrated by everyone. And whereas Black History Month has become a symbolic time and period in which the appreciation and celebration of African Americans begin every year and continues all year. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners, Manatee County, Florida, the February 2020 shall be known, designated, set aside as Black History Month in Manatee County, Florida, and the Board further calls upon people of Manatee County to recognize the special observance in which appropriate ceremonies and activities adopted with a quorum and present voting this 11th day of February 2020. You want to say Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Madam Good Chair. Morning. Fellow commissioners, on behalf of our uh, Madam President, Tanisha, she told me this, thank you very much. Thank you, Reggie, for everything, and we appreciate it. I'm the communication chair for the NAACP, so I uh, put the word out there saying, you know it's been rough out there for us, but we really appreciate this award, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Right, and now, in keeping with the theme of people doing wonderful thing for, things for their community right. and trying to protect the quality of life, let's have an adoption of proclamation designating February 15th and 16th, 2020 as the 38th Annual Cortez Commercial Fishing Festival Days in Manatee County. Put the mic down. I'm not quite as tall ah. as Reggie. <laughs> Almost with lifts. Um, anyway, you know, once again, uh, this weekend's coming up the Cortez Fishing uh, Seafood Fest. It's always a spectacular event. I know I've been to it, and I think all of us have for years. It's a great way to support Cortez and trying to keep its heritage and, and you know, raise the money that it needs to raise to keep it going keep the village the unique little area that it is. We all know it's under a lot of stress from a lot of different development going on. And, um, you know, we, we have many a contentious meeting up here as to what's going on out there, both from the county and from FDOT's standpoint, right, Jane? And, uh, but regardless of those differences, you know, we always have a couple of, you know, really bright days in February that the weather's gonna cooperate with us. So with that, the proclamation, whereas 38 years have come and gone, and still the party with a purpose carries on. Hmm. And they know how to party out there. <laughs> whereas music, art, and seafood galore will be served to thousands <coughs> on the shore. And whereas the Florida Institute for Saltwater Heritage and Cortez Village Historical Society report that they will preserve and that they are holding steady and still white boot ready. And whereas Cortez fishing families now celebrate more than 130 years of feeding the multitudes and the Florida Institute for Saltwater Heritage continues the large scale habitat restoration project in the fish preserve, the, hot, the largest and last undeveloped stretch of shoreline 
on North Sarasota Bay. And whereas the 38th annual Cortez Fishing Festival will be held on February 15th and 16th, 2020. And the theme is Cortez is still white boot ready. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that February 15th and 16th, 2020, shall be known, designated, and set aside as the 38th Annual Cortez Commercial Fishing Festival Days in Manatee County, Florida, adopted with a quorum present and voting this 11th day of February 2020, signed by our chairperson, Betsy Brinack. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners, Madam Chair, County Attorney, and County Administrator. I'm Angela Collins with the Florida Sea Grant Program. And as you all know, this is a this is a really exciting year because it was also Farm City Week's theme this year was celebrating the commercial fishing heritage in Manatee County. Um, Manatee County really um, did was built on commercial fishing from the early to mid 1800s. So our theme this year, again, for the festival is White Boot Ready, which could not be more apt. Um, we inducted Karen Bell as the Agriculturalist of the Year this year in Manatee County, and she's obviously Bell Seafood there in Cortez. So we hope that you all come out. We've got a lot of beautiful nautical artwork, wonderful food, lots of dancing. You can put on your white boots and dance the night away. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have a lot of really good educational things going on. Uh, John Steveley and I do dock talks down at the dock where we educate all of the festival goers about the commercial fishing in Manatee County, about some of our most important commercial fisheries that are here that um, come and feed a lot of our citizens and tourists as well. So come on out to the docks. Don't forget us out there by the boats. Um, we'll be happy to see you there. And I think John might have a few words to say. Kind of scary. This is my uh, 38th year at this podium talking about the uh, festival. It's been a long time and a lot of work, and it's just really an incredibly astonishing accomplishment of Cortez, the community, what's been done in terms of uh, continuing the heritage of the commercial fishing industry. It makes Manatee County a very special place, and this is one of the last, if not the last, working commercial fishing working waterfront left in Florida. So it's a very, very special uh, area. We now have the last piece of undeveloped uh, property essentially in the Sarasota Bay shoreline that's been preserved for the village of Cortez and also to the quality of life of Manatee County. So uh, 30 years later, <laughs> and White Root Betty, um, really looking forward to a great festival and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Jane, come on, you're not speechless. Yeah, I wasn't going to speak today, actually, but thank you very much. Um, we are excited. It takes a lot to put on this festival, but it does support what we do. I have invitations for you, so I'm going to quick walk around, and we hope. I know a lot of you always come out every year, and you don't know how much we appreciate that you believe enough in us to show up for our event. So especially given that sometimes that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. High season, lots of traffic, beautiful day coming up for the beach this weekend, too. But the Lord's blessed us year after year with some incredible weather and it looks like Friday night it's going to rain but then the good Lord's made it so that the weekend is supposed to be really beautiful so please come out enjoy enjoy us and um, we appreciate everyone who attends because it is how we keep things going and we do plan to stay white boot ready for another 10 years 20 years 50 years if we can help it thank you very much you guys come out and enjoy Thank you. And just for the publics, um, there will be a, still a park and ride on the bus, correct? Yes, absolutely. And, and that's one thing I wanted to say when John mentioned the preserve. We have some incredible partnerships with the county. For the festival itself, they do provide us park and ride um, from GT Bray as well as um, the beach. There's some challenges this year at the beach, so I want everybody to know that they're going to do their best, but you guys have a lot of construction happening out in Coquina, so um, it may be a little bit more of a test to be able to take that one. But GT Bray, 
We also, the Baptist Church right there on Cortez Road, has been so generous that they've offered their parking lot, and we have Monkey Bus coming off the island who is going to do a shuttle so that you don't have to get so far down in the traffic. You'll probably still get into some, but we can provide you a ride from there to the festival as well. The other thing is, is you all were generous enough and believed enough in us that with the preserve, you took on a conservation easement over that 100 acres, or it's not quite 100 acres, but you were generous enough to take that on so that it is preserved in perpetuity until you guys decide that you don't want that conservation easement anymore. So we did that in order to protect what we have and to provide a many, 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 many tiny Robinson Preserve in our area <laughs> because it it's not as big, but we hope it can provide some of the exact same things as we move forward. And we are moving forward. We are doing phase three right now in partnership with FWC, and we're working really hard to get that next round of monies to finish her off because she has a little bit of four, uh, phase three and then phase four, and then we can start really opening it up better to the public. So thank you. Thank you for the partnerships that we do get with Manatee County. I'm really glad to hear about the Baptist Church because that's a great place to park and ride a bike, which I we like to do is we like to ride our bike in. So um, so you bring your bike to the Baptist Church and then ride from there? I think there? it's a Baptist that's Church. Awesome. I've done that from there. Um, there's some other places you can park and ride from, but it's a great bike ride, and then you get to see the preserve up close. You get to see the birds that are in the preserve up close, which is what I like to do. So I do encourage people to look at that as an opportunity. There's usually great bike parking right around the museum. So, well, maybe not now because all the construction. Got a lot of construction there, so I would ask everybody at the corner of 119th and Cortez to be very careful because uh, there may be some areas, but it's nothing like in the past because we're doing a lot of road work out there right now. But Well, but, usually you don't have any problem finding a place to park your bike. So No, <laughs> bikes, would, are, bikes are easy. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We very look much. forward I'm to a great week. Out thank you all okay. for being here. Right, booty ready. <laughs> Good brandy. What? All right. Good brandy. Yeah. Next up, we have um, something we also do every year: adoption of proclamation designating February 16th through the 22nd, 2020, as Engineers Week in Manatee County. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and look, we got. Oh my gosh. Whoa. A little Gerstenberger here huh. in the cr crowd. Oh, you guys Morning, here, huh? I'm down, engineers. Yeah. We just see want to see the baby. Oh, <laughs> yeah, where's the baby? <laughs> just want to see the baby. I know, we just want to see the baby. <laughs> <That's all we laughs> <want>. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time we get to see her every year. Hey, Misty, you got the best job in the world. <laughs> I know. I feel so lucky down Come on down, I'm guys. Older. Come on down. I'll, I'll get up behind the podium so we can see y'all. Come on down. Come on down. Misty worked for an engineering firm for a long time, so she, she speaks right. both languages. Okay. <laughs> As everyone continues to file in, um, thank you all for being here. I didn't know we had such a great, healthy crowd of engineers, but I'm appreciative that everyone came for this proclamation. Um, you know, engineers find creative and practical solutions that really enhance our quality of life. So what they do is so important to everyone. And Manatee County has some pretty fantastic engineers. So it's my honor to read this proclamation. Um, whereas February 16th through 22nd, 2020 is designated as National Engineers Week, which is celebrated throughout the local engineering community. And whereas engineers help design, construct, and maintain the infrastructure and facilities that contribute to a high quality of life for all residents of Florida, its growth depends on engineers executing innovative, creative, high quality solutions to technical problems. And whereas engineers are bound by their ethical canons to hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the community, promote social and economic interests of the engineering profession, and stimulate and develop professional concepts among all engineers through education and in practice. And whereas engineers in Manatee County contribute directly to the quality of life in Manatee County by working with others to improve the safety and quality of our roads, our houses, our workplaces, our water, our environment, and the products we use. 
And whereas members of the American Society of Civil Engineers, Florida Engineering Society, American Water Works Association, Florida Water Environment Association, American Public Works Association, and the Florida Institute of Consulting Engineers are making strides to interact with the public sector and local schools to prepare future engineers to maintain our economic leadership and quality of life. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that February 16th through the 22nd, 2020, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Engineers Week in Manatee County, Florida, and it's fitting that we recognize and honor the continuing contributions of America's engineers by observing Engineers Week with the theme, Engineers, Pioneers of Progress. Adopted with a quorum present and voting this 11th day of February 2020, signed by our chairman Betsy Benack. And we have quite a crowd, so who's going to accept this proclamation? See, uh, yeah. thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Sia Milan is our county engineer, Public Works. Once a year, we celebrate and recognize the Engineers Week. Today, as part of this event, it's a tradition. Uh, we have with us uh, uh, James Schott, uh, the president of American Society of Civil Engineers, and Giza Bankati, I apologize if I butchered the last name, with uh, past president of American Society, uh, Civil Engineering Society. Traditionally, every year, we have used this opportunity to introduce to you and recognize your engineer's house within the Public Works Department. I personally am proud of our team within the Public Works that are responsible for implementation of your capital improvement projects and review and approval of, of all construction, completion countywide, be it public or private. In other words, our team is responsible for any construction activity, uh, regardless who's building it, us or outsiders, countywide. Some of the team accomplishment worthy of mentioning is finally 44 Avenue East, <laughs> our east-west corridor, bid opening today. Yay. Fort Hammer Road, Moccasin Wallow, being designed as we speak, Rye Road, uh, 45th Street East, uh, finished, completed, opened. Rabonia, we're pretty close to getting it to bid and uh, 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 contractual bidding procedures. On the utility side, uh, we completed uh, Force Main 5 Anna Maria. That was a major, major undertaking. Uh, I mean, the phone was ringing every day with either compliments or complaints. There were more complaints. <laughs> <laughs> series of public private utility participation uh, I would count at least six or seven the end result it's a process over a eight years period the process provided utility being available in port encouragement zone utility being available in the corridor south of I-275 all the way to the river bounded by I-75, and not to mention all this stuff on both sides of Fort Hammer and North River. I mean, it's a boom. All of that is a result of the utility engineers, proactive, uh, and public and private pub, uh, partnership. Uh, there you go. <laughs> we knew that was going to happen. You're being upstage, Sam. Sorry. Don't let this be here. We knew that was going to happen. <laughs> With that, I'm going to let our team to introduce themselves to you. And after that, we're going to recognize James Schatz to, uh, to have a few words about the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom, you might be as well the first one. <laughs> Might be out of breath after chasing her. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> Without introductions, obviously. And yes, I've been chasing her outside already in the lobby. Uh, oh, no, Thomas Gersenberger, Stormwater Engineer, Engineering Division Manager. And I'm here with my uh, two colleagues, uh, Ken Cohen and John Parry. Uh, 
Ken Cohn and I are pretty much the uh, members of staff in stormwater engineering that address our uh, development review. And John Parry also assists with our uh, design and permitting and capital improvement projects. So uh, I'm, as part of, uh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm out of breath. <laughs> um, on behalf of me, my wife Stephanie, who, who is here, Abigail, and also our newborn as of a month ago, Victoria, we appreciate um, everything that this county has given us. And uh, we appreciate, of course, our, my great supervisor and lead um, mentor, Sia Malanazar. So uh, thank you as always. Appreciate all right. It. Thank, thank you, you so much. You know how much we all appreciate you all. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good morning. I'm Ken Cohn, and I've been with uh, Stormwater Engineering, working for Tom and Sia for eight years. So I handle complaints, uh, like you said, drainage reviews and <clears throat> design reviews, uh, I'm working with... School. Oh, school. Yeah, I'm a graduate from the University of Florida yeah. in uh, engineering. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. My name is John Perry. I'm with the Stormwater Division. Uh, lately, I've just been doing a lot of uh, bond review, um, temporary use permits, and record drawing review. Uh, uh, I graduated from the University of Rhode Island many years ago, and I just want to thank Sia for putting up with all my moods uh, <laughs> these last 10 years. I think I got a little bipolar, but. <laughs> I might add, John Perry is a valuable. I've read it. <laughs> John is unique. He is very valuable. He is in charge of all of our regulatory permitting. And he could get tedious, and of course, that causes his mood changes. <laughs> Nobody said it was fun. <laughs> Good morning, Eric Schroyer. I'm one of the project managers. I'm a Manti High School grad and a UCF grad. Go Kings, go. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, Mike Sturm. I've been here a little over five years now. Manatee County resident for 19 years, practicing over 30 years as an engineer in the state of Florida. Um, I work with uh, the project management division, and occasionally I do some design, so I get in front of you from time to time. Cool. I might add, Michael did Coquina Beach design in-house. So what you see is totally in-house product, which is his product, and it was a copycat of what he did in Siasiki. <laughs> and of course, that sometimes comes with good and not so good. <laughs> um, yeah. I went to the, my school's University of Central Florida. Thank you. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is An Nguyen. I work in project management, managing CIP project. Uh, graduated 2006 at Cal Poly Promona. I've uh, been here one year, so really enjoyed the experience so far. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Glad to have you. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is Jim Renberg, project manager in public works. I went to school at North Dakota State University in Fargo, North Dakota, probably <laughs> something you don't hear too often around here. Oh. Um, in my life, our, prior to coming to Florida, I was a public works director and city engineer for a local government in Minnesota. I'm very excited to be here. I've been here for about one year, and I look forward to continuing growing uh, with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, Commission. I'm Dan Garner uh, with Project Management. I was born in Bradenton. I went to Palmetto High School, Mancy Community College, and USF in Tampa. Um, I've been with the county for a year and a half, and... I have traveled 35 countries. Wow. wow. Well, you got some proud folks from USF Ooh, listening, yeah, hearing smiling. you say that. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Laney. I am um, the bridge and structures engineer for the county, working on retaining walls, sea walls, uh, bridges, bridges, span wires, a number of things. But uh, it's really good working with Sia. And it's been, uh, I've been here four years, and I've been doing this work for over 30. <laughs> Great. Graduated from West Virginia University. Okay. West Virginia. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bob Halbach. I've been here for two years. Um, Michigan Technological University grad. Pull yourself. <laughs> and, uh, I worked with him for 17 years. I know him pretty well. We build stuff. <laughs> Good to see you, Bob. We're glad to have you. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Alejandro Gonzalez. I've been with uh, Project Management about two years now. And a graduate from Mercer University. Great. 
I'm Anthony Benitez. I'm a project manager at Public Works. Um, I've been at the county almost nine years now, and uh, I went to University of South Florida, born and raised in Tampa. All right, another ball. I'm Jeff Street Matter. Um, went to University of Florida, graduated in 1988 and uh, division manager and uh, get the privilege of working with this diverse group of people uh, with many different personalities and so many different talents. And so it, it has been a privilege and we just thank you for all of your support for us. We know many times, you know, our projects don't move as fast as we'd like and there are glitches and you've always appreciated what we do and, and listen to uh, what we have to say and, and support us and we appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning. Tony Russo, uh, Deputy Director in Field Operations. In my new role, I've had the joy of working more directly with the citizens, and it's been a real exciting opportunity. University of Florida graduate, and thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Scott May, the Utility Engineering Division Manager. Uh, I'd like to first mention there's a couple of my engineers that were unable to be here today. That was Tom Cady and he was a graduate of University of Florida, and Cody Keim, who was a graduate of USF. So um, our group basically is in, broken into three categories, development review, CIP design, and also planning and modeling to look at making sure our systems grow the appropriate way. So um, I graduated from Trine University, which is a small college in up northern, northeastern Indiana. All right, great. Good morning, Shay Shown. I've been with uh, Utility Engineering for 11 years now, or going on 11 years. I'm part of the CIP team that he mentioned for in-house in design, and I graduated from uh, USF. Thank you. Good morning. Good I'm morning. Denise Greer. I've been with the county nine short months. <laughs> <laughs> um, I graduated from Purdue University in 1987, and I just want to tell you what a good group of people you have here at the county. It's been a pleasure to work here. <laughs> and I want to say that this engineer taught me everything I know about engineering, just enough to be dangerous, <laughs> side by side in the same office for almost 13 years. And now she's ours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Denise. We're glad to have you. Good morning. I'm Michelle Adejumo. I've been with the county here now for about a year and two months, and I'm with the development review, and I graduated from both Florida State University and University of Florida. Yay, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm Lorenzo Duarte. I've been with the uh, county for about three months. Uh, love it so far. I uh, love the uh, work environment, love the people and I uh, review engineering plans, and I went to uh, USF for uh, a graduate degree. Right. Thank you. Great. Good to have you. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, my name is Paul Haas. I've been with the county for about three years now. I went to USF, and I work in development review and starting some CIP projects. Great. Thank you. Uh, I taught you everything. <laughs> <laughs> we worked together in the planning for... 10 or 11 years, I he, believe. He taught me some things, too. I'm sick. <laughs> Chris Mowbray, a highway engineering division team uh, leader. Graduated from Old Dominion in 1983. Came down here and uh, took a job with ZEP Construction, doing underwater construction and building bridges. That lasted a year because I'm not built for the heat. <laughs> uh, Jerome Goskowski hired me over the phone. And uh, <laughs> after a two-hour interview, in 1984, I figured I'd stay here for quite a while. Go Monarch. Thank you. Sia came in the following year, and um, it's been a great 36 almost years here. Wow. And I really appreciate everything that uh, you guys have provided me and my family. Thank you. That means That's we great. Were in I was trying to decide who'd been here longer, Chris uh, or Chris Sia. Has Chris has been here longer. We, we, we started in the old days. Uh, if you all recall, well, maybe you don't, uh, there were yeah. lots of shell roads countywide. That was 85, 86, 87. That was this assessment program going on, and we were just paving everything that was there to see. And me and Chris were at it back then, and uh, Chris is a very valuable team member, meticulous, I mean really meticulous, 
Record keeping, <laughs> you can't, I mean, you want something, you go to Chris. Uh, and he's a great team leader, and uh, we're really happy to have him. All right, sticking around a long time. Good morning, this is Dr. Sunny Fu. I'm a highway engineer, a graduate from Louisiana State University, and this is my 14th year with Benedict County. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, happy. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Stephen Sertola. I've been with the county for seven months in highway engineering, and I'm a graduate of Michigan Tech University. All right. Another Michigan Tech guy. <laughs> it's really cold up there at Michigan Tech. <laughs> really cold. <laughs> uh, good morning. My name is Gregory Bergman. I'm with highway engineering, project engineer. I'm with the county for nine years almost. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Cleofe Ramos. I work with the country for six months. I came from the Philippines and a highway designer for almost 35 years. Wow. I enjoyed being here. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. Right here we go. Good morning. Brent Stuffelbeam. I've been with the county for almost three years, previously with Cross Connections. Um, and luckily, uh, Chris gave me the opportunity to come over to Public Works, and I'm pretty happy with highway engineering. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hi, right, good morning. Uh, my name is Gary Hinton, the second. I'm an EI. Um, my family and I are originally from New Jersey. Um, my parents have been here for about five years now. Um, I'm working here for the county. It's been about well, eight months now. Um, I've been here in Manatee County for about four years now. And um, like I have to say, like I can't think of a better place here in Florida that I would rather be and live and work. I mean, this is a great county. I love love the people here. Love the beaches. I just love everything about it, and you know, I just love working for all these individuals behind me at Public Works. You know, they've been they've been awesome to work with, and you know, I love them all, and I love this county, and uh, appreciate you guys, the work you guys do, and um, keep it up. And um, I'm just happy to live here in Florida in Manatee County, and I want to say thank you. And um, oh, I forgot what I say. Um, I was gonna say, oh, I graduated from New Jersey in Institute of Technology kind of a while ago. Back in '99, and um, I had a civil engineering degree, and um, I was out of the field for a while, and I just feel blessed and fortunate that you know, Sia and uh, Chris, the rest of the crew there, they've given me a second chance to get back into my field, and um, I just want to thank everybody. Don't we need a spokesman? All right, <laughs> thank you, thank hey, you, thank you all. Welcome, appreciate and it. We're glad you're back working with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is that everybody? Did we get everybody to say hello? No. No. No, Bishaw. so many people didn't come down. Vishal, come on, there. we know you. You can't get away with not introducing yeah. yourself. Good morning, Vishal Kakkar, Traffic Engineering Division Manager, Public Works Department. <clears throat> How did you think that without traffic, we are done? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very proud to be here with Mandy County for a little over eight years now. Uh, this is pretty much the longest I have been with uh, any uh, any firm. Uh, I come from private sector, and I still remember the day that uh, CI interviewed me, and uh, and he jumped from his seat, and he went to get Ron, and he said, look, and I didn't even know what the result of the interview is, and he's like, we're going to get this guy from private sector. Uh, he was that proud to announce that in 2011. I, I uh, very rem remember that day, August of uh, 2011 when that happened. Um, I did my bachelor's in uh, University of Mumbai. For some of you, it's Bombay, uh, but it's Mumbai. And uh, my master's from University of Florida. A um, little brief uh, introduction to what we do, Traffic Engineering Division. Uh, we know what the number one problem and number one, if you will, citizen concerns. I don't call them complaints. Citizen concerns are um, um, speeding, uh, stopping at signals. We need new signals. We need growth. We need more lanes, more, more of everything, and we hear that. When I joined the county, I remember the population was 310,000. Now we are touching 400,000, and we are not even finished with that decade that I have joined. We are very fast going towards 500. We are no longer the sleepy little town that sits between Hillsboro and Sarasota. We are growing, and growing fast and um, very proud to be part of that growth, and with that comes a lot of challenges. I would be remiss if I don't mention the, the technicians, the engineering specialists, and administrative assistants who actually prop us up. So it's not just us, me, standing here. I always tell them, 
you guys do the work and make me look good. So thank you very much for that. Uh, but uh, we have some team members who would like to introduce themselves. But again, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning. Um, my name is Mukunda Gopalakrishna. Um, I have a bachelor's from uh, India, and I have a uh, master's degree from University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Uh, I've been in the industry for the past 16 years, and of which uh, six years is with the county. And I have a great team here at the county. Uh, we do, as we shall mention, uh, we do uh, traffic design, um, basically development plan reviews, uh, signalization, as well as uh, signal timings. And thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Neil Byrne. Graduated from Portland State University. Um, been with the county here now almost four years, and uh, have 15 years of overall experience and I work on um, land development review and capital improvement projects. Thank you. Um, I am Mary Wahid, and I'm a professional engineer, and I've been working for the county for two years, and I work for transportation planning. Thank you. Thank you. Who's this guy? Go ahead. Of <laughs> course. Good morning. My name is Dr. Pony. I've been with the county for 11 years. I earned my bachelor from Haiti and my master is in Belgium and my doctor at the University of South Florida. I'm now in transportation planning division. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, and we're done. Uh, Chad Budso from University of Illinois, unfortunately, not Indiana, so the real U of I. Nice try. So, uh, Sia mentioned, and we'll get, we'll get out of your way here, of one of the things, nobody really appreciates just how many decisions through a design or through a proce uh, project really need to get done. And yes, there is someone to blame for every decision that gets done, but it has to get done because otherwise there's just stagnation. And uh, as long as it takes to get through, a consultant has a question, someone has to answer it. Someone has to get an approval, yes, move on, or just make the decision themselves. And that's, you, you've now met the team behind you that keeps those things moving. And uh, we definitely are in that world where you definitely can't make everyone happy uh, with every decision. So thank you for understanding. And uh, uh, we support our team and are very proud of the team that has assembled within the uh, engineering recruiting. And that's been supported by the fact that Manatee County is a great employer and takes care of their staff. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, I'm going to introduce James Schott, President of American Civil Engineering Society, uh, recognizing the Engineers Week. James? Thank you. Commissioners, thank you very much for this honor of the proclamation. We appreciate it in our society and in our profession. And while I don't work for the county, I will say that Many of these individuals make me feel like I work for the county sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, ASCE is one of the professional organizations represented by this proclamation. And in our society, we provide continuing education for um, our members as well as all engineers. We fund scholarships and award that are awarded to local high schoolers and to uh, current engineering students. We provide outreach opportunities in the math ACES competition, as well as the toothpick bridge competition. And we're particularly proud of that one. The toothpick bridge competition is a competition where junior high schools, schoolers, and senior high schoolers meticulously build a bridge out of toothpicks over one to two months. Then we put it on a crusher and crush it until it collapses. But it is exciting. Um, and it's based on a, a ratio of the weight of the bridge versus the weight that it withstands. Do that when I was in college, um, and while whether we're a, a, a government engineer or a private engineer in the sector building bridges, building buildings, building roads, we all do have something in common. And as stated on the proclamation, um, a Desire and need to provide services to the public is most important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yes. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. That'll be quick. Um, as Sia had mentioned, uh, my name is Geza Bankuti. Um, I am wasn't born here, but I am. I've been here since grade school. Um, I have a wonderful family, uh, all from the area. Uh, parents are from the area, so. Definitely Manatee County is uh, true to my heart. I do appreciate everything that everyone does. Um, 
I graduated from the University of Florida uh, with both a bachelor's and a master's degree in civil engineering. And as Jim mentioned, uh, ASC, along with all the other uh, professional organizations, um, our main things are to give back to the community, to uh, educate the, the younger generations as they're growing up, to uh, encourage them to get into we hope civil engineering, but uh, the STEM programs in general, and um, also to uh, better educate the public sector. So thank you all very much. Um, we do have, this is more of an announcement to everyone else back there. We do have a joint meeting between FES and ASC tomorrow, tomorrow. at the Public Works facility. One PDH. Yep, and it includes uh, continuing education. So hope to see you all there. And um, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. And where did you go to high school? Southeast. Southeast. He, went, he, went to high, he went to high school with Without my daughter, it. so I have to say that. So. It's great. Again, members of the board, thank you very much uh, for this Engineering Week. Once again, I'll present you with your own team. Thank you all for being here, and I just can't help but think of sometimes when I get an email from someone who's complaining about the traffic, and they said, if you would only hire an engineer at the county, <laughs> I, just, sure. I just hope they're watching today to see that, yes, we've taken that advice seriously and have hired a few engineers. <laughs> so thank you so much for everything that you do, and, you know, we do have to keep moving along. You know, we can't stop growth. We just have to keep trying to keep up with it, and we know you guys are forefront and center trying to help us to maintain the quality of life in Manatee County. So thank you. thank you all for being here. All right. Never mind then. Yeah. All right. We're going to go ahead and move to our 10 o'clock time certain, which is execution of donation agreement between the University of South Florida Board of Trustees and Manatee County for property located at the Crosley Estate. Good morning, Madam morning, Chair. Elliot. We really appreciate the time certain. Uh, Board of Trustee Byron Shin is here this morning. Uh, Dr. Karen Holbrook, the reg Regional Chancellor for University of South Florida. Uh, Dr. Holbrook has been a great partner with us. Uh, truly blessed to have her skill set uh, in the region. Uh, it's interesting, I'm, I'm sitting here watching all these incredible engineers, and uh, uh, some of them were born uh, outside the United States, uh, received their bachelor's degrees, and uh, attained their master's degree at some school in the United States. Uh, hence the opportunity this morning uh, to attract elite talent. <clears throat> this past year, uh, University of South Florida Sarasota Manatee uh, uh, elevated their academic standards for admission. Uh, I could tell you I wouldn't have been accepted. Uh, GPA of 4.1, uh, SAT of, of 1,300 plus. Uh, so they are recruiting elite students uh, to that incredible university on the east side of the Crosley Mansion. We came to you several months ago, uh, late summer, early fall, on some conceptual ideas. Um, and based on your direction, uh, we're here today uh, with a, an agreement for you all to consider. The hard work of Bill Clegg uh, did a great job. Joy Levitt Murphy, uh, in incredible uh, employee for Charlie Bishop. Both of their hard work working with University of South Florida team uh, brought us here today. Uh, in your packet, uh, we basically wanted to go over the steps to the closing and why we need uh, a, um, uh, uh, your vote today is to execute the donation agreement that will allow USF to spend up to $100,000 on due diligence for, for the parcel of land. Uh, during that due diligence process, USF will develop uh, and deliver a use agreement uh, to the county um, that you will eventually uh, approve if you approve today. Uh, and a lot of the, the terms in the agreement is in Exhibit C uh, of this packet as well. Uh, then the Board of Trustees uh, would approve based on the due diligence, the findings, know that they could uh, build uh, future student housing, and hopefully uh, a future hospitality school. Uh, and then we would come back to the Board of County Commissioners for final approval. Uh, and then Joy and her team uh, would take this to closing. Uh, knowing that it's a state entity, County Administrator's Office wanted to make sure that USF facilitated at the current campus two public hearings 
Uh, so both communities, north and south, can provide feedback. Uh, and, and then that gives the Board of Trustees the ability, uh, uh, having the land uh, in their ownership, uh, the ability to approve the final master plan. Uh, what you see on this overhead, uh, and Joy has helped me, we'll try to orientate you there. To the left is, of course, Sarasota Bay. Uh, that dotted white line is a future multi-purpose trail uh, that uh, a few years ago, um, when the citizens in that corridor really uh, came to you all to try to say, how can we go through the Crosley Estate? Uh, how can we, uh, you help us create a multimodal trail to keep us off US 41 that we all know is um, not a good road to be riding bikes, walking, et cetera. Uh, part of the uh, agreement with the University of South Florida is they would uh, pay to install, maintain, and secure uh, that would connect the, the north neighborhood to the south. Uh, that would take you all the way to the Ringling Museum. Am I upside down here, Joy? Yeah, you're, uh, we're gonna have to put everything upside you're down. You're good. So I, am I good? You're good. You're good. good. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, this gives you an example of the current infrastructure. Uh, gosh, this was installed several, several years ago. The years are flying by quickly. Uh, when USF uh, installed this, it was about almost a four hundred thousand dollar project. Uh, and if for some of you who've walked it, uh, it's just absolutely pristine. <coughs> uh, if you've never had a chance, uh, uh, please do so. Uh, it's going to be great, not only uh, for the uh, communities, but the students to use, the general public. Uh, to the west of the uh, white hash marks uh, would be a conser uh, conservation easement that could never be built on. Uh, and right now, uh, nobody uh, is able to access that. Uh, so it's an opportunity for the community, the residents, the visitors to be able to enjoy um, hopefully a, a future native uh, park with some trails uh, with that beautiful shoreline there as well. Uh, north, the yellow uh, hash line, uh, a wall uh, will be erected there consistent with the wall that's on the south side currently uh, to give good separation uh, from the single family homes. Uh, County Administrator's Office uh, in, in the negotiations too uh, required and suggested more of a setback on the student housing. Uh, the original draft that you probably saw the last time we met with you <coughs> was uh, the 1A was parallel with that future wall, that yellow line. Uh, so there is better setback there. The parking is not a garage, it's flat surface. Uh, there is some green space there. Number three is the future hospitality school. Uh, and you know, with the team that Dr. Pat Mario has, and the professors, uh, I'm blessed to be on the advisory board. Boy, to have that future hospitality school there geographically uh, uh, positioned uh, to the Crosley Mansion where we can utilize students hands-on during the events. The caterers can use students hands-on while they're facilitating food. Um, and they can get the necessary hours in the workplace uh, for their training as well. Uh, with that, um, you have Exhibit C. Uh, I think what I'll do is for the, uh, the public consumption is just run through those, and then I will uh, ask Dr. Holbrook and Byron Shin to say hello to you all, uh, and then we'll ask for uh, some feedback from the board. Is it the other direction? What would I do without Joy? <laughs> I think it's the other direction. Okay, here we go right here. Okay, and some of this is a reiteration. Of course, number one is uh, to dedicate a section of the green space uh, as a conservation easement uh, that is west of the hash mark. Uh, UF, USF will uh, extend the existing multi-purpose trail. <clears throat> I think right now uh, it would be open to the public from sunrise to sundown. Uh, they do have police powers at their campus. Those police powers would be extended to this future property as well. Uh, architectural style, very, very important. Uh, USF did a great job <coughs> complementing the Mediterranean revival style architecture of the current estate. Uh, they would continue that uh, with the future student housing, uh, with the future hospitality school. 
uh, the limit of four stories. Uh, that would be the max. Of course, the FAA, Sarasota Braden International Airport, uh, would obviously provide feedback as well. Uh, we have John Barnott in the room too, so his staff has reviewed uh, this from a planning and zoning standpoint as well. Uh, we talked about the um, number five is a control fence uh, that would separate the Crosley estate that you currently own uh, from the uh, future USF extended property. Uh, that would be a wrought iron fencing with the concrete columns consistent with the current look. Uh, so we would be really uh, thrilled to have that look as well. Number six talks about security me measures. Uh, we like the idea that USF would be required to maintain and secure that future. It's about eight acre piece of property on the north side of the boat basin. Uh, some added value number seven uh, would be uh, cooperating uh, with uh, the university on meeting space. Uh, Selby Auditorium, uh, quite kindly, the county has used it in the past. Uh, we've had a great partnership, uh, all the administrations since they built that campus with Manatee County and the Crosley Estate Management uh, to cooperate and use facilities. Um, we added that as number seven, uh, as well as we thought number eight was important because, you know, with the high retirement rate that Manatee County administration is going to be uh, working on over the next several years and with new employees hired, uh, we're going to develop with them through our HR department and department heads a nice certification program or programs uh, for all county administration. Um, and uh, uh, that would be at a 50% off rate as well. Number nine is um, uh, parking. That, that cooperation has been in place. Uh, I think most of you know Fridays there's no school. Uh, Fridays is when we may have a peak event at the mansion. Uh, so what we do is just check with facilities of USF, and they allow us at no charge uh, to utilize their parking. Uh, and, of course, we cooperate with them if they need to utilize any part of the mansion. Uh, and then finally, number 10 is the, uh, uh, the wall consistent with the south wall on the north side, and they would put that in right away. So with that, uh, I'm going to introduce, um, I think, Byron Shin as our local board of trustee. Uh, and then he'll turn it over to Dr. Karen Holbrook. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you, commissioners and, and the staff. It's a thrill to be here to talk about this. Um, as you know, we have been striving to become a traditional campus and to attract those students that otherwise are leaving the community. So when they stick around here, and if they can finish their higher ed here, they tend to stick around. So this only elevates our, our workforce. And secondly, the trustees have a meeting coming up next week mm -hmm. as a committee meeting, and we're going to be updating them. And then the first week of March, we have our regular board meeting. So we'll be talking about this again. Obviously, this is the first step in the process. Um, we all can appreciate the waterfront in the walk they're talking about that connects us all the way down to New College. For those of you who haven't walked it, it's a real gem for the community. So you're preserving. Except for you can't take your dog. Second, Elliot didn't mention it, but that boathouse there, that's for our women's rowing team. So it's still in the works, and we have money that's been donated, and that is probably, probably two years on the outside. For those of you that know Bill Mariotti and Anila, they're the ones that are really pushing hard to get that finished. Um, so you see the two buildings, 1A and 1B, for housing. Uh, we already have uh, the discussion at the trustee level for bonding for that. And we're looking at following the finishing touches that have happened in St. Pete to roll down here. Uh, we're also looking at and very concerned about the transportation and the traffic out on 41 and the entry, entryway to Seagate. So we have have had discussions with the county and we want to continue to be good neighbors because we know that is also a key entryway because we don't want traffic coming through the middle of our campus, but it needs to make our parking. And so part of what he talked about, and it was just very, very so brief, was that that Seagate can be very narrow. And at some point we will need to widen that and bringing it back to the housing that you see here and the parking. So it will come down toward Crosley. So I'm very excited about that. I love the idea of moving it back across and putting in the wall immediately 
to be good neighbors to our neighbors to the north. And as we continue to grow, um, it would be nice to do something along 41 with some of our neighboring properties. So we are working to try to do some of that too, but we are not prepared to come to you today to talk about it, but it is on our, our radar. So we want to make that entryway into the Crosley to be the gym all the way back. And it already is back there, but it's the entryway there. Um, and we're, we had somebody mess up our gate. We had a traffic accident there. So we can use that as information on why we need to have some traffic calming because it is tough to leave at those events without a traffic signal. So anyway, thank you very much. And I'd like to turn it over to our Chancellor Holbrook. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners, Madam Chair, County Administrator, County Attorney. Thank you for listening to us. I'm not going to say very much. I just to say, start out and say, all three of us live in Manatee County. And we're very happy to do that, and we love the partnership that we have with Manatee County in so many ways, not just the land, but just to let you know a couple of things that I think are important to show our commitment and how much we value Manatee County. We have 500 students, dual, dual education, or what do you call them, dual degree students that come from Manatee County right now. So those, we hope, will all be USF students at some point. But to get them into college in their last two years of high school is really important, and then trans transition them on to us gives them two years of virtually free education. We also have a new program with the uh, school, with, a, with Manatee Education, in providing scholarships for folks to go into the nursing programs or to go back and gain nursing degrees, get ones as undergraduates, or go back and get higher education nursing degrees. So we do a lot of things with Manatee County. We're in both counties, but Manatee County is by far the one that we have the most activities with. So we thank you for all those great partnerships, and we look forward to uh, what comes next in the future. I want to introduce Eddie Beecham, who is our chief financial officer, and Eddie's been largely responsible for helping us get this master plan in place and doing the financial kinds of things and helping us estimate what the trail might cost and a number of the other things that are so critical to making sure that this is the right plan for the right land. So thank you very much for all of your support and help. Thank you. Madam Chair, just some closing comments. <coughs> I, I spoke to Jerry Lopez, uh, who's responsible for the Southwest District redevelopment efforts and this would be uh, an incredible way to enhance uh, those redevelopment efforts. Uh, those new dollars coming, uh, not in only Manatee County, but the region. Uh, as we all know, out-of-state students are, are, are double the tuition. International students could be triple the tuition. Uh, Jihan Chobanuglu uh, travels around the world to recruit students, and the biggest challenge that University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee has is finding these students housing. With our hospitality industry, we've developed uh, some partnerships with Pittsburgh Tech College, LaGuardia Community College, and uh, when they get their associates, uh, whether it's hospitality or culinary, uh, they want to come here. But as soon as they ask us about the housing, uh, the conversation uh, shortens really, really quickly. So this parcel is limited in use. Uh, we feel like this is the best recommendation for use. Uh, for this community to grow moving forward. Uh, we need a good, solid four-year university with housing. Uh, that's why we're bringing this recommendation to you all. Um, so with that, uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to turn it over to you and, and, and ask for uh, uh, your all thoughts. Okay. Thanks. we got some commissioners that have some questions or comments. Commissioner Trace. Uh, yes, you have a great uh, relationship already with the University of South Florida. And uh, I'm happy to see this go on. And when you're ready, I will entertain a motion. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Baugh? Yeah, I, um, I think you, know, you guys know that I am definitely in favor of dorms being built. We need them desperately. And I have to tell you, I, I, I've been awake since about 4 o'clock this morning. And in reading the paper, I see this bill that has been filed up in Tallahassee. And I couldn't help but think about you guys. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, and I, I know that all of this land there that is, um, you know, waterfront will be a great asset to the school. And um, I, I'm glad that Manatee County could do that for you. It's a great move, and, and I uh, hope only the best. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Servia. 
Yes, um, Dr. Holbrook and USF, thank you for your partnership with Manatee County. We really, really do appreciate it. I'm very excited that this is in my district. I just can dream of so many things that are going to happen as a result of your investment here, uh, and it really is uh, very exciting. I know housing is the key student housing. So I'm really glad that that's finally coming to pr uh, fruition. Um, I also know that there is a, um, a big, big resident support for the multi-purpose trail. They currently use the trail that's not exactly in this configuration. I know they go through part of the Crosley estate and that has been a little bit problematic. Um, but there are a lot of people in Ballantyne Manor who continue to use that trail. So thank you for making accommodations for them. Um, and please, as you develop the trail, do your best to make it a shaded trail so that it can be used year round because that's gonna be key. Um, I had a question about, will the public have access to the future water uh, you're gonna have a, for the rowers? What, what are you gonna do out at the water? Uh, yes, uh, to be candid, uh, I did not update Byron Chen on the latest for the rowing. Uh, we've had the best of the best rowing experts out there and uh, they can't figure out how to uh, effectively and safely launch shells from either the Crosley Estate property, i.e. the boat basin, or even that north shoreline. Uh, there's seagrass there. Uh, the water could be very low. You all can remember years ago, we dredged the boat basin. There was seagate, uh, uh, seagrass mitigation. Uh, and we've looked at it and looked at it and, and had experts and designers. Uh, so the good news is you all invested in Fort Hamer Park. Uh, so USF has that area to train. They're totally launch, uh, uh, they're right now currently launching at New College. You can actually walk the shell right into the bay. Um, and then you have Nathan Benerson Park. So, so today I'm telling you, um, there may not be a boathouse there. That white rectangular is an open space uh, to enjoy the beautiful bay, whether it's students, the public, uh, visitors, uh, that is an open campus, um, you know, today. Uh, so uh, short story long, the visitors will be able to access that pristine piece of property and enjoy it because right now uh, you can't enjoy it because there's really no trails there uh, to be able to effectively open it up. Thank you. So it's my hope that there will be a connection from the multi-purpose trail to the water so that as many residents as possible can enjoy that nice scenery. Um, I really appreciate the wall on the north end too, because with the parking being so close to those homes, that's gonna provide excellent protection uh, between the two. So thank you again to everyone, to the team. This is a wonderful project. Yeah, and I, I think um, some of you who maybe follow me on Facebook see that I take a lot of pictures down here. I frequently take my dog down to New College because it's a great place to take your dog to walk along the water. It's my only concern, complain about the pathway on the USF is you cannot take your dog. I said I would say that because um, it is a beautifully no, right. shaded. No, there's a sign because I walk the trail a lot and it says no dogs as soon as you hit the um, property that is on the Crosley actually. As soon as you hit there, no dogs. I don't know what to do with my dog at that point, to tell you the truth. Um, but it's, um, I walk this, it's a beautiful trail. It is very shaded. Um, you do get down to the water, you get to, uh, at, at New College, at um, the, uh, even all the way down to the museum. It's a beautiful place to walk. They don't allow dogs either. Of course, you have to stop there. Um, <laughs> well, I do. I take my talk down here because it's, it's just a beautiful place to go see the sunset. And Jeez. if you live down in South County where I live, close to the water, this is your best water access, and, and they're wonderful. They allow you to, uh, to walk around there. And I'm really looking forward to the trail. We'll have to talk about whether or not we allow dogs. We'll have to discuss that, I guess, um, because it's, I know. Uh, <laughs> it, it's important. But I'm really looking forward to having this trail expanded. And hopefully there'll be a um, break in the fence so that you'll be able to go into, what is that road right there, Misty? Is it Long, Bay? Bay Long Bay Boulevard. Long Bay Boulevard. So you'll be able to get access there. Because this is really important for people to have access to walk down there. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. So. Madam Chair, the, the, the other exciting thing about the university owning the trail is um, 
the um, security phones along the trail. Phones, yeah. Uh, which them. is a great amenity to have for our residents and visitors. Okay. All right. And I, I need to probably know why the dog thing is not allowed <laughs> at some point. And that's us. That's on us, I believe, because it does happen once you uh, get to. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll pose that question. Thank you. <laughs> I said I was going to bring it up. Um, yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Byron right. right. said he'll walk your dog. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm walking my dog. I, I need the exercise, Byron, but thank you. Uh, thank you for that. I definitely need the exercise. Commissioner Johnson. <laughs> We've gone to the dogs. Um, Somebody has to represent for my dog. I, I, I hear you. Um, you know, I think it's a great project for, you know, because it, it kind of starts what I would hope would be the continued revitalization of that whole South Trail and the connection of all those different educational universities that are, you know, bing, bing, bing as you go along. And we all know that the housing is a critical component of making that all work. Um, I also like Betsy have walked it. And I think coming off of Long Bay Boulevard, you know, I've met with a lot of those residents down there, you know, and it's, you know, it's a way they would like to enjoy that facility. So I think the fact that you're going to put a gate in there and allow them access because a lot of those people like to come down Westmoreland and Long Bay, you know, and then and and get all the way down to um, Condazan and all that. I mean, it is just a spectacular facility. And I think it's great that the county's going to do this, you know, public partnership with you all and uh, our public public partnership, I guess. And, uh, public, public. you know, and I hope that, you know, as we go forward, we've continued to accumulate money in the Southwest TIF. You know, and hopefully we can find some places down there to spend it, you know, in the commercial areas, um, you know, along that 41 trail. And again, get into some of that traffic calming because it is a suicide play going in and out of the Crosley or trying to, I go to Captain Bryant's a lot and, you know, you take your life in your hands sometimes pulling out there. So I don't, you know, we'll, we, fortunately we just had all the engineers here so they can probably figure <laughs> figure all that out maybe type of thing. but. I could see over the years that that's going to be a uh, uh, an issue that we're going to have to address at some point. But uh, as far as the, the um, you know the donation to the land, I'm all for it right now, and I wish you luck, and I hope you can you know get the money either through bonding proceeds or through the generosity of the state legislatures. So uh, good luck, Commissioner Baugh. Yeah, um, you know what, everybody's talking about Seagate, and it's funny, I'd brought that up in my briefing, and, and I was always surprised when um, DOT didn't look at 41 and say the main entrance to the college, you know, would be uh, what they were looking at rather than Seagate. So I, I'm sorry about that. I think it would have been so much better for you had it been uh, the other entrance, but for some reason, I just can't imagine what it is, that wasn't done. So I'm sorry on that one. But the other thing that I would say is that it is a great partnership that's happening right now between Manatee County and, and, and the school. And, and I would love to know for, I'm going to get a little selfish here and talk about marketing uh, for the county to show what a great partner we are. We need to figure out what the land uh, is valued, the nine acres, so that we'll kind of have an idea of where we are there um, so that we can you know, kind of pat ourselves on the back. And first of all, we have and really enjoyed our relationship with the county since the inception of this property donation, where our Wait. campus sits. Secondly, working with Elliot and your team and the county administrator and your attorneys, it, it is it has not been painful at all. Good. We just get issues on the table and we we figure out how to be sensitive. So on the dog issue, we didn't even know that. So we'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Because that's here, <laughs> I walk my dogs too. Same thing. So as long as people pick up, we got no problem. Right. So and keep it on a leash. The second thing is on Seagate, we have talked at length years in the last two years that I've been engaged with the county about maybe trying to move that entryway. I know it's premature to talk about it at this point because we have the turtle issues mm -hmm. and that's why we have that space. So people are constantly curious as to what's behind the trees. But we have been working very closely with your team here over the past about how we might pivot this. So it is not off the table okay. to try to put something together. And then you've got some other property 
that I don't want to name that's just to our south mm -hmm. and how that border coming in from the south picks up. And we started our four-year nursing, which is second-degree nurses. We had over 150 people that qualified for our college of nursing at this campus. We only took 30 because that was all we could take. We got another 50 coming right behind that. Most of those 30 people don't live in this two-county area, but they plan on sticking around here. And these are very, they already have a bachelor's degree and they're coming back to get their nursing. And then we plan on bringing in master's nursing at the same time, right here. So, so you're talking about, and you, and you tackle that along with State College of Florida, what we can do. Uh, it's, it's amazing, and that's just in the healthcare part. And I, I can get me going about cybersecurity and engineering and risk management and the insurance companies. But Karen Holbrook has made a huge difference. Absolutely. But back to Elliot. Um, we'll work on this. It is part of our dream. I mean, it, it really is. Mm -hmm. And we want to fix Seagate, too. And so we want to be great partners. And we know we got to invest in it, too, because it's our roadways. So the commitment is there. As you all know, I can only commit. And I can't do it alone. It's got to be the trustees. And we, we can only commit for our year. And then, but the vision is there. And we're going to communicate this, this exact vision uh, next week. And if Elliot or one of your staff people want to come up with us and be a party to that discussion, we'd love to have you. No, i I got to tell you, I've seen her in Tallahassee, and she can she's really good. She, she <laughs> well, holds her you. own. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm glad to hear that about um, the entrance because I think it would be so much better from 41. And, and I actually voiced that, I believe, a couple of years ago. Um, and I know when I, when I went to meet with all of you, um, we talked about that as well. So I hope that that's something that uh, perhaps the county will help in that endeavor to get it moved this time. Right. And I, I, I want to be very, very careful, but you made a comment about the newspaper today. And we are watching that very closely. But we're very, we are very good citizens with our campus to the south and New College, along with Florida oh. State <laughs> and yeah. Ringling and the Ringling College of Art and Design. I know. And so we are going to try to do some partnering with the Ringling College of Art and Design, too. And you guys still share um, law enforcement, right? Yes. With, yes. with New College. Number so, of things. Yeah, I was real surprised to read that in the paper, but anyway. Well, we're tracking it very closely, and I, I think we'll be in good hands when all is said and done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention on the um, on the road. You know, we know we've we've worked um, with DOT. DOT has looked extensively at this area. I know sp speaking with Casey Welsh a lot about who who also represents y'all up in Tallahassee and speaking with DOT mm -hmm. that they are focused on this area, trying to improve the access. You know, we've looked at road diets, we've looked at roundabouts. There's a lot that's been going on. Um, and DOT is focused, so I, I think all the uh, all the partners are talking, and we look forward to actually getting something done in this area. Absolutely, this is such an important entrance to our county. So um, I, I know that is happening. It is just a question of timing, I think. But um, and, and it's like the chicken or the egg. And I was in those meetings personally with DOT when they were discussing roundabouts and the traffic counts weren't quite there for a traffic signal, which I th was just totally. Mm -hmm dumbfounded that that was the case. But when you get housing plus the growth we're having on our campus, I think the combination of those two, we will get different results on those counts and then the need for it. Um, and I think that this beautification effort will only help attract more people in and out of this area. So I'm hopeful that we'll still get a traffic light there. So, well, sure. But in, in doing that, we're going to have to combine those two roads. Mm -hmm. right. So I see that as a necessary piece. Right. And we're all willing to work with you. Commissioner Servia. Yes, um, thank you. I had a question that I neglected to ask the last time, and that is about the current uh, fire access at the western end of the property. So I, I think when I've walked out there before that it says something like fire access only, and the trail and the fire departments have kind of shared some of that area. Can you explain why that is there today and how it's going to be maintained and those yeah, details? Uh, that was um, required to get the uh, CO for the mansion. Going back in time, probably right around 1995, the fire marshal at that point, I believe it was Whitfield back then, yeah. um, because of how narrow Seagate Drive is, uh, they wanted a secondary ingress for emergency vehicles only. 
Uh, and that's why um, uh, the Public Works Department put that grass road in. They come in and clear it out every once in a while to make sure a fire truck or an ambulance can fit. Uh, thank God we've never used it uh, at all. Um, but part of that will be the creation of the new multimodal trail. And of course, as part of the uh, development efforts, the uh, uh, Cedar Hammock, I think it is today, uh, will be involved in making sure that uh, USF meets all the requirements, the codes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, if I could just uh, touch upon uh, the question about the appraisal or the land value. Uh, we didn't do a, an appraisal um, because the land is limited in use and has restrictions if the private sector would try to develop it. Um, uh, if it's the pleasure of the board to get a value, what, we'd, what I'd like to recommend is, you know, we can get an estimate for a drive-by value or a full appraisal, but the cost may be uh, uh, kind of expensive. Uh, so we, we want to let you know that before we go down that road. Uh, but the, the land is restricted in use, uh, wetlands and, and all that. So um, just wanted to give you some thoughts on that. Yeah, and I, I was thinking about that when that question came up because um, some of us were actually here <laughs> when this land was acquired by the county. And when I say here, I worked for the county at the time. The uh, issues that came forward is there was a developer that wanted to develop this property. Um, Mr. Famiglio and I, some of you probably <laughs> were around, and I'll tell you who was, you know, really a champion too back in the day was Dan Miller Breaking in down. making this happen, making this campus happen, making all of this happen. So it was a process where the county stepped in. Um, it was an interesting time. The neighbors were adamantly opposed to the development and the growth, and, and even with the university, it was a tough fight to get that approval, and that's where Dan Miller was very, very helpful in um, working through that. So I think about where we've kind of gone through the site to get to this point. Um, I think this is something that makes a lot of sense. As far as a uh, valuation, I think it is tough to do a valuation given um, how we have progressed on this. I'm not sure I would like to spend a lot of money on a um, appraisal. <coughs> I know that they can be expensive, but certainly a ballpark figure on, you know, finding someone that could create that. That would be my uh, thought. Um, I have Commissioner Serbia and then Commissioner Baugh. No, I'm no longer on the Okay. Board. Commissioner Baugh? Yeah, I, w I was going to say I, I, um, I realize that some of the property does have wetlands, okay? I, I know that, but some of it doesn't. And so just since it has belonged to the taxpayer, I thought it might be good. And I know that the property appraiser can probably, as Commissioner Benack brought up, mm -hmm. give us a rough estimate as to what those nine acres could be. Because th the bottom line is, if it was all wetlands, they wouldn't be building dorms. So that doesn't really answer the question. I'm all for it. I just think we should have an idea for the taxpayer. And also, you know, it shows that we are being good partners. And, and I think that means more than anything. So I'm just kind of surprised we didn't do that to begin with, but I do think it's something that we could probably get a rough estimate on. I think that would be important. Sure. Okay, okay. Uh, Commissioner Trace. Uh, yes, I'd like to make the motion that we have the execution of donation agreement with the University of South Florida Board of Trustees. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion uh, by Commissioner Trace. I heard uh, uh, Misty second it. Um, is there anyone in the public that would like to address the board on this motion? This works. Okay. Seeing no one come forward. I'll close public comment. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes, sign motion passes. We look forward to. Thank you so much for your happen. support. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Let's get some dorms. <laughs> All right. Going back to our regular agenda, it's time for citizen comments on future agenda items. I have no one signed up to speak. This is on a future agenda item, something that's not on today's agenda. Would anyone like to come address the board on citizen comments on future agenda? All right, seeing no one come forward, um, I'll close stands. citizens' comments on future agenda. <laughs> now we'll move to the consent agenda. We had two items. Um, item number 38 was, uh, there's just a slight correction. And then item number 17 was removed for discussion at 1130. 
Um, is there anyone in the uh, audience that would like to address the board on the consent agenda? Well, I don't know. Let me All right, that. seeing no one come forward, I'll go ahead and, and close um, public comment on the consent agenda. Commissioner Trace. Motion to approve the consent agenda minus with the corrections to 38 minus 30, uh, 17. Second. Okay. You got a motion and a second. You got to be a little bit quicker, Reggie, to beat Mr. I know. It's all okay. the bottom of my life. I'm all just right. everything. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're thinking about it. Um, all right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. If I could, Diane. My computer, all of a sudden, uh, in talking about it, it, it's dead. If you could get someone to come, that'd be great. Did, you know, my did, mine did the same thing to me. Did, I, did you hit Control-Alt-Delete and have to start all over? That's what I had to do. I've tried that. It didn't Although, work. wait a minute, maybe he heard me and maybe something's coming up now. Well. Let's try. Okay. All right. Thank you, and we will now go um, to, uh, let's see, what do we have? Da, da, da. Commissioner comment. Nothing. We're done. Wow. <laughs> Are we bad. done? Yeah. Is that what you said? Till 11 till 11 for 17. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Till 1130. Right. Till 1130. So we're going to go ahead and go to Commissioner comments. We'll go ahead and start with uh, Commissioner Baugh. Um, I will... Uh, I'm not ready at this point. I'm sorry. I'm still working on my computer. Okay. If you could get back sure. to me. We'll come back. Uh, Reggie? Have yes, just a few thank yous. Uh, go out. I had a great meeting um, concerning the Memphis Lighting Project uh, with, Ray, with Ray Dowling. And I met, met with um, the administrator. Just excited that that's about to move forward in the direction that it's going. And some other great news. Just wanted to make sure we put that out, that those lights are coming to the Memphis area. <laughs> Wonderful. That's good. Yep. You know, we know we know government's not fast, but right. sometimes you can persevere and things will get done. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yeah, just again, um, following up on the Cortez Seafood Festival, um, you know, it is going to be a, some traffic issues out there. So, again, uh, people that are watching it, I would implore you to either go to GT Bray or the Baptist Church to get there. I do know FDOT has suspended their construction for that weekend, and I hopefully they will be putting out a lot of orange cones and Thank you. Thank you. trying to keep the traffic moving on Cortez Road because it does tend to get uh, a little messy out there, especially late Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. and into the evening. So again, I, if you're going to it, um, either get there early or use one of those other alternative parking uh, Facilities. It doesn't cost you anything to get from there to there, and it's kind of a fun, fun little ride. You get to meet some new people on the trolley. So um, that's all I have. Yeah, people love it. I've, I've ridden on the bus a couple times, and people really enjoy it. Everybody's in such a good mood. And anytime you're going to something that's fun to go to, people are willing. Like being like at Disney World, they're really wi willing to take public transportation. Yep. You know. So it's and the it's bus drivers. Trip. Yeah, the bus drivers are always. Very nice to people. So people like it. Uh, Commissioner Servia? Yes, thank you. And I agree with that. I rode the bus last year from GT Bray, and it was a great experience, a lot of fun. We'll probably do it again the uh, same mm -hmm. way. All right. Um, a couple of things. So I want to start by saying a few comments to Reggie when he did his proclamation, because I didn't have the opportunity to speak then. But you did such a nice job, mm -hmm. Reggie. And thank you for shining a light on the local mm -hmm. aspects of black history, because I think we all know a lot about the national aspects. But you did a really, really nice job today. Thank you. Um, uh, we did have a TDC meeting yesterday. Um, uh, the highlights, uh -oh. uh, I think the highlights were all about Moat Marine, and uh, there was an article in the paper today. And so two things happened at the TDC meeting regarding Moat. There were two motions. The first motion was a unanimous uh, support from the TDC to, um, and I think the wording was, that Moat Marine was the top priority of Manatee County. And the second motion was the selection of one of the four options presented by staff to support Moat Marine. I've asked that this item come back um, or come forward to our Board of County Commissioners on February 25th to discuss uh, whether or not we would like to support Moat with any funding. 
So stay tuned for that. Um, and that's all that I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I did get your email at requesting that that come back on February 25th. Yes. I, I, I said fine with me. Again, that's a, a staff issue. I, you know, having a recommendation from the TDC come before the board is pretty standard operating procedure. I just wasn't sure how much time was needed. So I'll, I'll defer to Sherry. Was there any thought on that? Thoughts can, on that? We can bring it forward on the 25th. 25th. Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that because the timing is very critical as we look at the ending of the state legislation uh, session uh, that there be some sort of input from Manatee County to the state of Florida. Okay. Thank you. And we'll get we'll get a report from um, you know the exact language of the the motions that were taken when we yes. when that comes back to yes, us. We'll have that as part, as part of the attachments. Yeah, because I did not get a chance to watch it live, so. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You guys are marching, marching. Do you have anything you want to? That's for item 17. That's for okay. item 17. Okay. That's okay. All right. Good. Uh, Commissioner Trace? I don't have too much. Just happy to hear uh, <laughs> when the engineers were here and they were talking about projects, a lot going on in my district, and y'all kind of got caught up quickly. The Rebonia projects and a lot of others that we've been moving on are moving on. And uh, pretty much got the chili cook-off already in. So I'm good. Thank you. Yes. Yes, that is good. Well, I'll just comment on, I did um, attend the regatta this weekend. Um, just a, an incredible event as always. Um, I was so glad to see Friday night, I was at the event, um, the kind of kickoff event, if you will, and both mayors were there. Um, uh, Shirley um, um, Grover Bryant from Palmetto and um, Wayne here from the city of Bradenton. So there's really, the coordination is really working out well. Um, you know, it was just a, a gorgeous evening. I don't remember if that you all saw the sunset that evening. It was just so beautiful. And people are just so excited about an event that has so much going on along the river. Because it really does unite us as a community. I know it divides us when you can't get across that bridge. Oof. But, um, and we're still working on that. That's still our number one priority to do something. <laughs> but uh, that kind of an event, people just love it. They, they, it's all free. There's, um, the you know, a great crowds. People walk. I said it was great. I, I came right down on Saturday. It was late in the afternoon, and was able to park in the garage here. Had no problems. Been walking down along the waterfront. The river looked, the water was nice and clean. I, it just everything looked so great. And to see the crowds up on the bridge, really enjoying a beautiful day. It's just an amazing event. So I want to say thank you to Mike Fetchko. I know he puts a lot of effort into organizing that. Um, uh, Mayor Shirley Bryant said they had a great um, street festival in um, Palmetto. People enjoyed that. And I know there's been some concerns about you know folks not being able to get through, but they had a good concert. I think um, they would like a little bit more promotion for the concert that they had on um, at, um, two o'clock in the afternoon, they had a, a entertainer, um, Christian artist, that, and I can't think of his name. Michael W. Smith. Michael yeah. W. Smith, and I heard that was a very, very nice concert too. So we still have things to work on, but um, it just really is a great event for folks. Other than that, I don't really have anything, so we're going to take. Oh, uh, excuse me, Commissioner Baugh. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, I just, um, what I was going to talk to you guys about, I'll wait until the next meeting to cover, but just to touch base on uh, Moat that Misty brought up, um, you know, Moat Marine is a great asset to not just Sarasota County, but Manatee County as well, and, and um, you know, I, I think it's one of those things where we need to show respect and, and, and you know, I, I praise them for all they've done for all these years in the county, uh, some of which is also in Manatee County. So um, I look forward, uh, Misty, to it coming forward on, did you say the 25th? Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's uh, shine, if we can, here in Manatee County. Thank you. And it, nothing else, um, Commissioner Bob? No, Comments? not right now. Thank All you. All right, so we have one item that is comes up per our procedures at 11:30. So, uh, did you have anything, mm. Sherry? You Do we to have add to wait before? until 11:30? Uh, thank you. Uh, Ask Mr. Palmer. You know, it's standard operating procedure because we always want them to give staff notice of when this project comes up. It says on our agenda outline. It says. 
11.30 a.m., items pulled from consent agenda. So does that mean we have to wait? Yes. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's the answer. We're going to take a break until 11.30. We'll be back at 11.30. It'll be done by 12, I'm sure. Thank you.
Motion. All right. We are back in session. We had one item that was pulled off the consent agenda. That was item number 17. Um, we've had some concerns raised by uh, another soccer club about the use of Premier Sports Campus. So go ahead and. Uh, I think we're here to answer any questions that you have. Sean's our point at Premier. As you all know, he does a great job, and, and he uh, is our liaison with all of our tenants, our customers. Uh, so uh, I'll be here, but, but Sean's here to answer any questions that you all may have based on uh, some concerns that you've heard. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon or good morning. Sean Walter, CVB Senior Manager. Um, one thing prior to questions I want to let you know. So when we purchased Premier Sports Campus in 2017, we adopted um, all these agreements, um, fortunately, between tenants and events. So when the agreement was running up, we looked at one-year terms like we do for some of our events, which are just events. But then when we looked at our tenants, we wanted to streamline some paperwork. So all our tenants were looking at five-year agreements. That's where we turned to the county attorney to help us and assist us on that. So that's kind of where we're at. Okay. Well, um, Commissioner Baugh wants to start it off, and then I'll, I'll yeah. get some comments. Um, Sean, maybe you can help me. Did you just say that this is a one-year agreement with the Chargers? No, no ma'am, no. This is a five-year, so. yeah. So we have one-year agreements with clients that come in and host large events because of the fact if they're regional or national, they come to <laughs> the East Coast one year, then they go to the West Coast, the Midwest. So those are one-year agreements, but we're looking to streamline and go into five-year agreements. Yeah, and I do understand. I mean, I, I was very familiar with Premier before sure. we purchased it, obviously. And I know that there, you know, we had groups that came in from out of town and so forth, but now it's a county-owned property and that kind of changes everything. Um, so, you know, I know that, um, you know, Lakewood Ranch Park, I know for several years it's, it's been um, full. I mean, I've been out there many times. There's been many issues in the past that uh, Charlie Hunsaker, I'm sure, told both of you that he's very familiar with, that he was instrumental in, in trying to get some things done. But the problem is, is that there's over 1,500 families that uh, play um, at Braden, Braden River? Yeah, I thought so. I almost said woods. I wasn't sure. Um, so the, we've got a lot, a lot of Absolutely. taxpayers in Manatee County. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to look at them and tell them that, you know, we can't help them. So here's my question. It would be wonderful if, oh my, okay. It would be wonderful if, you know, somehow we could also help the local teams, the, the local kids play on some of the fields to help the overflow because they're slammed. I mean, I, if y'all, I don't know if y'all have ever been there or not. I certainly have, and it really is. They're packed. I mean, they they need more fields. And as far as I recall, do we still have 22 fields? I believe. Uh, yes, ma'am, we do, and uh, things are going great. And we love to see our children outside uh, with activity. So so important today. Uh, I just want to want to go back. Uh, I guess almost two years now. Uh, when the opportunity was presented to the Board of County Commissioners to acquire Premier Sports Campus. And I think that the total sale price was $5.3 million. Uh, at that time, uh, you know, county budgets are tight. Uh, you all applied $4 million of tourism tax proceeds. $4 million? Yes, ma'am. Oh, my. Yeah, and okay. then the balance was impact fees. The idea of that was, uh, and I think Sean will tell you, we're, we're basically on a trend of, 40 million in economic impact from tournaments that come into Premier uh, for this fiscal year. So it's 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 really catering well to the East County and, and mainland communities. Um, and then also the charge was um, to make sure that we maintain the integrity of those beautiful 22 soccer fields. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's our job to try to find balances and and bring in out of town business because we know those, those first-time visitors will return again. But at the same time, if we can utilize those fields for our re residents, then there's the, the balance that we seek. When I did a workshop with you all you know, back in, in uh, late summer, early fall on, the, on the, the Capital Improvements Convention Center Premier, Sean had showed a 60-40 rate ratio of about 60% of the athletes came from outside Manatee County probably outside Manatee, Sarasota County, and then 40% were local. The Chargers, and Sean, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna back off here, the Chargers 
uh, there may be a little bit of a misconception. A lot of the participants are Manatee County athletes. Oh. Totally respecting the need for more more soccer fields, lacrosse, uh, and that's where you know Charlie's going to come behind with all the great things on the master plan to build out for the community. But I can assure you, as your staff director for Premier, that any time we can put local kids on those fields, we will. It's in our fee resolution as well to offer that out. Um, uh, so there's that balance there. So if you ha if you want additional information on the on what the Chargers bring to this community, Sean can sure share that with you. Thank uh, may you. May I interact, Madam Chair? Um, and, and correct me now if I'm wrong, okay, because I believe from what I gather, uh, this new lease doesn't even start until June, so we're three months ahead. Correct. Um, okay, and here's my question, I, and correct me now if I'm wrong, because I might be. I, sure. I believe there's only about, what, 300 soccer players? With the Chargers? They actually have three divisions. They have a recreational division and a competitive division. Recreational is the 5 to 12-year-olds, about 300, 350 players. The competitive division is 8 to 18-year-olds, um, and that's about 200, 250. Um, both of those are Manatee County residents. And then the academy division is 12 to 19, and that's a higher level. So there's about 30% from the area. They're all part of the Chargers. Correct. They're, okay. they're called the Lakewood Ranch Chargers. And, and I'm sorry, what was the last figure, Sean? I missed no it. No problem. The last figure down. is their academy division is yeah. 12 to 19-year-olds, and they're high level. And there's a lot of travel with that. So their com competition is Braden River, IMG Academy, FC Sarasota. Amazing. They're all competitors. I'm um, 100 playing that. Okay. So the rest are Manatee County. Yeah, and the reason I'm asking is because, I, as I recall, I, I've been out to Premier many times when sure. the Chargers were playing. And as I recall, they're not all Manatee County residents. I think some are up from St. Pete. So um, well, some are from Sarasota. So they have a right. Clearwater and a Tampa and a Lakewood Ranch division. Okay. So a lot of St. Pete travel mainly in Tampa for recreational. Parents won't go as far for recreational. Yeah. You know, so I, I guess my point is is that we're looking at 1,500 over here. We're looking at approximately, uh, let's say 800, mm -hmm. and that's really more than you mentioned, but a few. Sure. So I think <laughs> what I'd like to see, Madam Chair, is to see this continued, because we obviously have some time. I mean, it's not due until June. Yeah. It doesn't go in effect until June. So if we could postpone and and maybe have some conversation to see if there isn't some way that we can also help our other soccer teams that are just. Well, if I, I, maybe we could add more at the at Lakewood Ranch Park. I don't know, Charlie. Maybe not. I'm, but I mean, we're in a jam. If I could add one more thing, just so everybody's clear. Also, we have other tenants. So side by side, the Lakewood Ranch Chargers. We have Lakewood Ranch Adult League. We have flag football, um, which is an Under Armour flag. We have Happy Feet, which is for three- and four-year-old soccer. Um, and then we have FC Sarasota Metropolitan semi-pro team practicing out there. So under the lights, because practice is mainly from 3, 4, 4 o'clock till 10 at night, mm -hmm. they're completely full. The whole complex is full. So it's All not 22 just fields every day? No, no, at nighttime. Because oh, but I mean every night? Uh, correct. Yeah, Monday through Thursday. I'm going to go out there. I want to see. I never realized Thursday. that. All 22 and then Saturday years. is recreational academy games and then other events we leverage in from out of the town. I just want to say one more word, okay. if you don't mind. And Charlie can vouch. And, and maybe I don't recall if all the commissioners received this or not. Perhaps Charlie Hunsaker could help me here on what I'm about to say. Just so you know, Sean, at one time... Braden River needed some lights, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and it was a chore because, as always, you know, oh, well, they're not in the budget. And um, it, it took some doing. But in the meantime, I just want you to know that we, I know Charlie and I, like I said, I'm not sure about the commissioners at the time, we received more emails from irate parents than I have ever received from one group since I've been on this board for almost eight years. Right. So I'm just letting you know, if we can't work something out, they're not going to email me. They're going to email you because I'm going to tell them. Right. Okay. Right. So no offense. I mean, I, I don't know what the answer is. I just know that, um, you know, our children, we need to make sure that we have room for them all to, to be able to play the sport. 
I do know that since we looked at purchasing um, Premier, I, I do know that Braden River has requested time and time again. I don't know what, uh, maybe we could switch some teams, you know, smaller uh, teams going over to Lakewood Ranch Park. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if there is one, but I do think that it would be prudent for us to at least look into the possibility. That's all I'm saying. And let me, before you, before you speak, because uh, I, I was going to pull this off the consent agenda as well. Oh. And in full disclosure, I was a soccer mom. My son played competitive soccer for the Braden River Rage against the Clearwater Chargers when Clearwater Chargers were, in fact, and in Clearwater. <laughs> Did you send those emails? Um, no. <laughs> wow. No, but I <laughs> have been through this, and soccer can be a very competitive sport. We have excellent tournaments. You know, I was at um, um, Carabas after a tournament and I was there and there were all these families, soccer families, and I couldn't help myself. And I went up and I said, where are you playing? And they said, we're playing out at Premier. And I said, well, what do you think of that? What do you think of that? That is a great facility. And I don't remember where they were from. They were from the East Coast, some team. And I said, well, you know, the county just took the initiative to buy that property and make it a county property. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's wonderful. We love coming over here. So we get that's a big part of it. That was a big part of it. But the reality is, and we all know, because we get people that talk to us all the time about the lack of playing time, yeah. the Hispanic League, that guy is always oh, coming to talk to us about, about the lack yeah. of playing time. We know that Charlie's trying to deal with the demand for the um, soccer fields and trying to figure out how to how to meet the demand. So we're in a tough we're in a tough situation here, and I agree that we need to talk more about this. And I get that we had a contract that we had to honor with the Chargers because yeah. they were there and they were paying paying to play at um, Premier. Mm -hmm. We're in a different situation now. That contract is done. What do we want to do moving forward? It is a county facility. Yes, we paid some funds with the tourist development. How do we make sure that we are honoring those commitments? But I think this is a bigger picture. I'm in favor of holding off until I get some answers because, you know, it's, it's a valid question from our, um, our residents. You know, why can't we play there? You know, why, or why does, and certainly they're called the Lakewood Ranch Chargers now. They probably have more kids locally. But, you know, how do we not treat one group differently than another? The government can't do that, in my opinion, but maybe I'm missing something. So I do think we need to hold off to have some more answers. That's the way I feel right now. Um, so, Yeah, they are our anchor tenant. Um, and I think it, it's important to know that uh, it's more than just league play. Uh, they do the major uh, Labor Day tournament, and that's why we were excited to bring it to you all now and Alex Nicodemi has been a super attorney to help us get these agreements because that is uh, it really infuses, um, I think it's uh, 1,500 room nights for that Labor Day tournament. They, they, they brought in AS Roma, uh, so there's a big event in, in, in December uh, that helped give the mainland a push. And then they provide volunteers for the U.S. Soccer Winter Showcase, the Nike Friendlies. Uh, that's why we felt this anchor tenant was, was perfect moving forward. But at the same time, I, I've met with, uh, with this uh, gentleman right here just two weeks ago in my office. He has some incredible ideas uh, uh, to help uh, grow um, assets in this community. So, you know, we're here to serve, we're here to listen, and we're here to find balance. I can assure you that Sean and his team have reserved fields for other lakes, i.e. Braden River and Lakewood Ranch, um, and then they never executed them because um, they thought there was a need and then there ended up not being a need. So for two years, we've actually never executed an agreement for them to use them when the fields were available to be used. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's the only urgency is the sooner the, the chargers know that, that we've committed, they can prepare for that big Labor Day tournament and AS Roma um, because there's a network that needs to fill those slots. Thank you. And, and I get that, and that's a tournament, and certainly I'm not suggesting that we stop that tournament. I'm pretty sure it was after that tournament when I ran into the families at Carabas, but, um, you know, that it, it's different. We're talking about an extended usage schedule, not just tournaments, right? 
I mean, this is all year round use, right? Yeah, it is. And there's, it's uh, Dave Schumer, Charlie Bishop's field superintendent. Uh, he's an artist because we're actually uh, moving teams from, you know, field one to field two to try to rest fields uh, because you all charged us. And we totally agree when your constituents say, gosh, it is beautiful out there. We really want to work hard to, to maintain it like that. Are we challenging our field superintendent to stress those fields a little bit? Yeah, we are. Um, and he's doing a great job uh, keeping those nice and green. So there is some, some artistic uh, maneuvering every day. Uh, and we do pray for rain a lot too. Hmm. Um, you know, so, but uh, we think the system is working well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Charlie Hunsiger and I communicate a lot. Uh, we, we have a clue of what he needs for the residents. And, uh, and anything he does, uh, we're here to help him diversify if there's opportunities to bring in some business as well. So, so I mean, that, that's our mindset at this point, uh, Commissioner Benack. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I always relate this to some of my issues that I have with basketball courts. And the demand is up, obviously, for soccer. Um, we have that issue in North River, um, some at, Link at Lincoln Park as well as at, at Blackstone. And I've received emails and, and complaints. Um, the only thing that I want to make sure that we do here is, 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 and I'm not saying this to no person, but I want to put this out as be, you know, fair and equitable. All right. As far as this right here, is there an opportunity to coexist? And this is probably why we want That's to. What, yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> is there an opportunity to coexist? It's, which is probably why we want um, to look at it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether or not it is or it is not. But be before we go down that road, I know we're talking about the contract, and I want to ask a question. Um, if there's a delay, because we're in February now, all right, and I've been a part of the planning of the tournaments and everything like that, um, how would this uh, impact the Labor Day tournament? And before you respond, Sean, let me explain to you where I'm going. With the potential opportunity to coexist, if there's a way where we can segment contract and say we can move the tournament, and let, allow that to keep moving forward. Then we come back with the lawyers and the terminology and negotiate the terminology for the field uses and the, the field usage, and to assure that it's equitable and, and if the po possibility of it coexisting. We need we need to look at that. Um, we know the tourist dollars that come in with the sports and everything like that. But with the tourist dollars coming in, we also have taxpayers dollars coming in, and we want to make sure we have a level of sensitivity to that. So. I'm going to wait. I want, cause I want all of us to be on the same page because I love you guys and I love everything that you all do. No, I love everything that you all do. So I guess my question is, um, how will the delay impact the Labor, Labor Day tournament? If you, Because that's what my concern is. Or, or could you have a contract just for the Labor Day tournament and hold well, off on the other? Well, first of all, delay. so everyone knows, too, the charge is a non-exclusive um, contract, an agreement. No, no. The one thing charges do, if we were to leverage another event, let's say, coming in in three months, I could go to the charges, say you can't use the fields Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we can bring in an out-of-town event. That's the partnership and that's in the, the agreement first and foremost. But to answer your question, um, so if they stop playing in June, that Lakewood Ranch charges would ultimately, I don't wanna say the word fold, but they'd have nowhere to practice for that event. They not only host that event, it's the biggest fundraiser, but they also participate in it. Um, and they leverage teams from all over the country. So, um, I'm not so sure what the club's answer would be that we're not re-signing agreement. You have nowhere to practice. Your local rec um, competitive and academy can't play anywhere, but we'd still love to host your event. I'm not really sure how that would go. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the biggest thing is um, if you had a complex that had 20, 30 lights, everything would go away. The problem is obviously the kids can't, can't play until you get out of school or practice as the Braden River Soccer Club play at night. If, if we were to look at coexist, Weekend rec games could work fine. We'd have to streamline our, our, our calendar right now to block out other people because um, we're doing 10 different sports, flag football, rugby, um, Australian rules football, lacrosse. So we'd have to look at that, and that would be strategizing. Okay. Commissioner Servia. Um, yeah. Thank you. Lots to digest here, and I am in favor uh, of – getting more information and postponing this, but I wonder if we have a date in mind from the county administrator. No, we were. I don't have a date in mind. We were expecting it to 
passed be today, approved. so I don't have the didn't have the opportunity to consider a new date, and or working with the county uh, attorney's office. See you, Miss uh, Commissioner Trace. Uh, yeah, I personally, th Premier Sports is not like any other park that we have. We have. Uh, I'm not saying Charlie's not professional, but oh. it's a it's a place that is being run as more as a tourist type thing than a park it, for I mean I know we try to use it as much as we can and I've been there several times on some of these flag football grandkids play and they do the events I personally I, I would make the motion right now to go ahead and accept it I think we need these sounds to me like they have heard what y'all have said they're trying their best, to, but we also, we have to, A, make that a premier place so we can't use the fields all the time. You want to see some fields get used all the time? Come on over to Blackstone. Um, <laughs> there's no grass. It's dirt. They're playing soccer on dirt over there because that's the only way we can get them on there. It's not a regular park, and I personally want to use, I want to accept the advice of the people that are running it, that know it. And it's supposed to be raising money. It's supposed to be doing the tourist dollars. It's not just a recreational event. Um, like I said, I'd be happy to make the motion. I'll, I will make the motion that we uh, uh, do the recommended motion. I'll second it with a comment. Uh, Commissioner Baum and Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I will not support your motion because I think that even if at this point um, – you know, if the residents in this county, I mean, if we don't change anything, that's one thing, but we should at least have the opportunity for there to be discussion. And I think if nothing else, I mean, I know we, we want to talk about those fields, and trust me, nobody knows those fields as much as I do. I've, I was there from day one, uh, before uh, the convention center actually was. So, um, you know, the bottom line is, yes, it does take uh, special care to keep the fields up, absolutely. It's got the best irrigation, uh, I think, that we have in this in this county uh, to do that job. But at the same time, it's not owned by a private company anymore. It's owned by the county. And we owe it to the citizens to at least look into seeing if there isn't some way, some time, and maybe not even, I'm not saying all the time. I don't know if there's an answer. But I think we owe it to the citizens to see. Now, whether or not that would take so long, I can tell you now, if, if it took two weeks, that would not be too long to wait for them to still have their lease to come due in June. Nobody wants to lose the, the chargers. That's not what anybody has said. So let's not get carried away. Um, and the other thing is, by the way, I think we're still, uh, are we still at a loss um, every year on that property, I think? I don't. I mean, I don't want to get into that. I'm just saying. I know that we're not. That's in the budget yeah. projections, yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah, I, I know that we're not in the black. Yeah. I guess is what I'm trying to say, uh, to be easy. Um, so I think we need to look at every avenue available, and I understand, Sean, what you're saying. I really do. Sure. I, I do, and I, I. I'm not saying you're wrong mm. on anything. I am saying we owe it to the residents of this county to see if we can't find a solution for some of the kids that are having problems playing soccer. And I don't think a two-week wait um, to bring it back perhaps on the 25th of February at our next meeting is asking too much. And I'm sorry if that, you know, I realize you wanted it done today. I think this is, what, the third thing yesterday and today that's come forth with the convention center. But I do think that we need to just slow it down a little bit maybe two weeks, and, and see if there isn't something that we can do for our, for our citizens, for our residents, who, by the way, do have some say, and, um, you know, they, they support this county with their taxes. That's important. And like I said, email's not to me. So thank you. That's all I'm going to say. So, no, I, Priscilla, I can't support your motion. Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I just have a, a, a couple of comments. I, I'm, I want, can you define what you mean by anchor tenant? Yeah, absolutely. So an anchor tenant would be somebody who is there regularly, um, and that is considered their home. IMG Academy obviously has their own home because they're bigger. Uh, FC Sarasota 
which is a very large group. Their home is, is Sarasota. And then obviously Braden River Soccer, is that's their home where they play at uh, Charlie's Place. Um, so that's what we considered as an anchor tenant. Um, probably we asked for more out of them than any other tenant for the volunteering, for help leveraging events. One thing to know, when we leverage an event from out of town, we turn to them to say, we need your help leveraging it, meaning sanction it through Florida Youth Soccer Association, as well as provide volunteers and then and provide teams. Okay, so the, the reason why I feel like my concern about not moving forward, and I agree maybe the 25th is a better day, I'm concerned about tournaments, sponsorship, and those things that come along with it, and the timeline as we narrow that window down for um, entities to go out and, and try to acquire that support. And this is one of the things, from my perspective, why we have to be real careful. But if we're going to go back on the 25th and, see what and we get, but if we're going to get more information, I agree. But I do think we need to make sure it's clear. The more we delay this, the more impact on what we're going to have. And we don't want to start that out there at Premier because Premier is out there for a, a marketing tourist reason to bring tourists reason, so I'll end on that. <laughs> Mr. John you, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I just have one question. Uh, uh, to me, it sounds to me like we have a supply and demand problem. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and we have that a supply great, greatly out, you know, does the demand. So, we're going to have to come down and say, well, how do we cut this baby up? you know, to make it so that we keep everybody happy, and I don't know that you're ever going to keep everybody happy yeah. when you have that. I mean, it's a, kind of, you know, from a business standpoint, it's nice to have that the demand <laughs> is exceeding the supply, but, it, you know, you know, trying to be symp sympathetic to the residents of Manatee County, you're thinking, well, I guess they should get first pick, you know, of the use of the fields since they're the, you know, the ones that, you know, have funded that. Um, and yet we know, I think as Reggie said, I mean, our... Priscilla, you know, Premier is kind of a unique facility because it's not really a park to me. It's, it's uh, again, it's uh, the county's version of IMG, um, if you will, you know. And um, so I don't know that, you know, delaying it is going to, that it, oh, we're going to come up with a solution. I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, but if, if you, you know, it, it, unless you can convince these kids to play some other sport, you know, that doesn't have them on the fields, but, you know, soccer, you know, like I said, I live right next to IMG, and I listen to those kids from 7.30 in the morning till 8 o'clock at night on every one of those fields, and they've got probably 20 fields out there, and, I mean, they're jamming, you know, they keep the whole their time. their fields green. Oh, I can't imagine yeah. how, they, well, how they manicure them, but well, anyway, I, I just, you know, I mean, I just don't know, I don't know where, how, I can't figure out what the solution is. Because unless we say, well, we'll go build 10 more fields somewhere, you know, or 20 more fields, and maybe that is ultimately the solution, you know, with, with the land out east as we keep growing that population, you know, um, I don't know, you know, I, I'm just kind of, well, it, I don't know if we're going to, by delaying it, whether we're going to come know, up with an solution. answer, a solution. Concern, but, well, but we no, are going to have to at some point hear from Charlie. I mean, I, I hear all the talk about what um, Premier is what it was and now we're talking about what it will be we're talking about the next five years okay so we're talking about entering into a contract what's proposed today is enter into a contract that makes the lakewood ranch chargers based out of clearwater right that's the address on here makes them the prime tenant here yes. and and that may make sense but I got to look at how much money was paid for out of impact fees, what the plan is for Premier moving forward, how are we going to accommodate the soccer teams. I, my comfort level is not high at this point to say that the Chargers came in, they were part of Premier Sports, and they want to continue. So do we keep Premier Sports the same as it was moving forward, even though we used county impact fees to pay for it? I don't know. It is part of a bigger picture, and I don't feel I have the bigger picture. Now, I, I, I just, it just raises too many questions for me. 
at this time, and I'm sorry I didn't say that until my briefing, but that's, I just read it and read the email and thought, yeah, this does raise a lot of questions. So whether or not there's a good answer, we certainly have a supply and demand problem. We know that. Um, you know, but it, it just gives me a discomfort to think that we're going to go with the guys that, you know, already had the contract and we're just going to continue that for the next five years. Does that make sense? I get it. They've, they've got the resources. They want to continue this. It's a wonderful thing for the county. But how do we answer to the other soccer players that don't have the resources or the place <coughs> to play? That's what I need to be able to do. I'll live in Lakewood Ranch. It's not just the Oh, no. I, I, they changed their name to the Lakewood Ranch Chargers. Not the whole thing, though. Well, that, that's their name. Right? Isn't their name now the Lakewood Ranch Chargers? That's it's, what I said. It's actually Chargers Soccer Club is the actual name. Yeah, this well, is a Lakewood Ranch division because the rec and competitive are local. Like I said, recreational, they won't, they won't drive to Tampa or Orlando to play. It's just kids learning how to play soccer. Okay. So I must have read that somewhere. Two. Okay. Um, Commissioner Servia. It says I'm number five, but I'm next. Good. Yeah, I've gone all through. I just haven't taken anybody off. Oh, okay. I will. All right. All right. So I am also in favor of getting more information. I just really am. I understand that we have $4 million of TDT funds that were used for this park, and so that there is a, an expectation that we're going to be – um, you know, attracting tourists to use and pay for it. But we're also, as Betsy brought up, we've used impact fees, and I, I believe we're using some of our op operations are being paid out of general fund. Is that correct? I Am believe I you're accurate with that. So, so we have an obligation to okay. the, the people who live here, to mm -hmm. the residents, that they should have some ability to use these fields. It just makes sense to me. So I'd like to see a better balance and more information. Mr. Palmer. Yes, commissioners, I just wanted to point out there is a non-exclusive use provision within this contract that makes it clear that they do not have exclusive use. In fact, that provision even says that, uh, uh, that the county has the ability to trump their schedule in the event that we want, uh, you know, to uh, to allow usage by other parties. I'm looking at paragraph 15, labeled as non-exclusive use, and I see Assistant County Attorney Nicodemi making her way down, so she may have some additional commentary. But I just wanted to point that out. From a contractual perspective, it's very clear that, that their use is non-exclusive in nature. Mickey, thank you for that. Very yeah, helpful. just piggybacking on that, that was very important for the county to maintain their rights to use the fields as they deem necessary. Additionally, if you look at 3A, the field use period, the Chargers are only using four fields per day for league games and uh, five fields per day for uh, practices. So we're not, the Chargers are not using um, all of Premier during this time. So just for a clarification point on that matter. Mm -hmm. That's great. I just think we need a bigger picture because we talked about all these other people that are utilizing the field. You know, what is the availability? We, we clearly got the email from the representative of the Braden uh, River Soccer Club saying, hey, we want an opportunity. Yeah. So I don't know. Is there other people that want an opportunity and they're denied that opportunity because of the the demand so that's maybe a bigger picture and yeah it's tough you know we have to we clearly have limited resources large demand when it comes to recreational facilities but we need maybe a bigger picture rather than just saying yeah we're going to give this contract another five years that's my thought um all right we have a motion and a second to approve the agreement is there any i'm sorry uh, get her to read the motion the motion? Could you Just a recommended motion, which recommended would be motion to approve for approval. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second, the recommended motion. Um, I'm going to open it up for public comment. I'm going to open it up for public comment. Please come forward, state your name for the record, and you know, you don't have to be sworn. Automatic. Good morning, Commission. My name is Brendan Moriarty. I am the general manager of Brighton River Soccer Club. I want to apologize for my casual. Uh, attire today. Uh, uh, the reason I sent the email was we recently learned that the, the lease agreement with the Chargers was coming up for renewal. The only thing that we're asking is, is that uh, you take the opportunity to, to consider additional information that may not be uh, available to you now. Uh, we, we are uh, the primary tenant at Lakewood Ranch Park. 
We service over 15 uh, to 1,600 families in our community. As Commissioner Baugh mentioned earlier, uh, we are full every night of the week, and we have asked the county on multiple occasions prior to, uh, we asked uh, the original owners prior to the county owning it for space. We've asked the county every year uh, to consider us, and we've always understood that the lease was, was in place and that they've honored the lease, and we respect that. Um, again, we would ask that you consider to see if there's an opportunity for additional usage. Uh, we're not trying to exclude anyone. Uh, the cohabitation thought has come about before the commission. Uh, we're not trying to exclude the tournaments. We believe that, the, that it is a wonderful resource for Manatee County. Um, I live about three minutes from the field, so every time there's an event, um, we live that day in and day out, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity. I'm also a business person in the community, and I think anything that we can do to increase Manatee County's visibility in the nation is helpful. And we're not trying to impede on that whatsoever. What we are asking for is, is to take a little bit of time to see if there are any other opportunities where Braden River Soccer or any other organization might have the ability to uh, cohabitate and or use the fields to help us alleviate us with our um, problem every night where, where we're, we're over full. Uh, we're turning kids away from the program. Uh, the last two years at Braden River Soccer is the first in the 20 years that I've been involved with the program where we had to take a waiting list, which means that, that, that I'm failing as the general manager because I don't have places for the children to play. And that bothers me personally. And if we can come up with some agreement with the county to, to increase field usage space for us, that would be extremely helpful. And I think the residents that we service would be certainly appreciative of that as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anyone else would like to address the board on this issue? All right, seeing no one else come forward, I'll um, close public comment. We have a motion for approval. Um, did you want to speak onto that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, if this motion fails, which I think it will, I'll be willing to make a motion to bring it back on the 25th. Anything else I'll let you need to add before no, we take I, the vote? Uh, you, Commissioner, uh, you, we have direction. Uh, we will give you a good case study. We'll drill down on the benefits of the chargers. Uh, we will continue to collaborate um, with Brendan uh, like we have uh, in the past. And uh, we will make sure that we show you uh, ROI on your impact fee investment as well. Uh, and of course, uh, reiterate the tourism benefits. So uh, we have clear direction uh, if this does not pass. And um, we have our marching orders. Okay. And, I, and again, I'll say Charlie has to, from the Parks Department, we need to know kind of the big picture um, as well. So we have a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, raise your hand. Okay, motion fails. Commissioner Ball? Yeah, I make a motion to uh, continue this um, until February the 25th. That's dumb thing. February the 25th, the approval and execution of uh, the lease with the Chargers. Bring it back on the 25th. Is, uh, second? Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. Um, are, are we okay with that, Madam Administrator? <laughs> we'll do the best we can. I'll let you know if we can't. Okay, thank you. All right, yeah, we don't want to stop the Chargers' progress. We know they have a great tournament. We're not saying that we're going to take that away in any shape or form. At least that's my position. We just need maybe a bigger picture, and um, I'm going to support the motion. And, Madam Chair, if I may, I cannot presently picture any, any modifications to this contract that are, that are called for here. Um, I mean, to the extent that any modifications to this document are necessary, Certainly, my office will be there uh, to assist in that regard. But as of this moment, I can't picture any provisions in this contract that are that are that are crying out for modification. Uh, un 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 unless I'm misunderstanding the board. Well, well, uh, let, well me I, uh, let me let me just amend the motion initially, and then I'll uh, commission Bob. Uh, yeah. Because oh. we've got we've got a two week turnaround, and so to the extent that it involves rewriting aspects of this agreement. I guess maybe we need a little bit more direction from the board. Well, you, you uh, will get more direction on the 25th if that's what it takes. I enough. guess the question I would have about this agreement, 
which says that they have this field for this days and this is when they have it for the tournament for this days. But all of that could be just canceled at any time by our people. Exactly. What kind of a contract is that? I, I'm, if I'm the head of the Chargers, I wouldn't enter into a contract like that where it says I've got this field tied up for this much and I all of this. But but you can all the Apparently you can staff just say oh, no. Apparently that's, they're agreeable. Well, we don't. That's oh, yeah. going to be sure. no. We decided that we really need to have more soccer fields available for these other teams, and you're out of luck. They're agreeable to that. Is that what I'm getting? They, they, okay. they, they are agreeable. Yeah, and, and the reason <laughs> they are is, um, as well as I know, Brendan's club would think the same thing. It's it's to continue the caliber and level of playing field that they're understanding the fact that um, that if they do allow these in, it's a better economic impact to us, more revenue generated, and it goes right back into the facility. So they kind of see that as an opportunity. They see it as an opportunity also to um, showcase their club and have their kids in the academy level play in those as well. It also suggests to me that there is a high level, uh, a, an excellent working relationship as between the respective staffs, such that there is a high level of trust here. Uh, there is a I history and therefore a high level of trust. And so I, you know, that, that suggests to me that that's at least part of the Chargers thinking. That you're 100% accurate. And, and, uh, and I'm gonna be confident and say we have a high level of communication uh, in the community. Uh, we answer every phone call. We try to put as many teams on those fields as possible. Uh, I don't think that we've ever turned anybody away um, uh, based on availability. Uh, so, uh, but you know, we could we could put that on paper uh, if if you are requesting that. I think, yeah. Madam Chair, I would like to withdraw my motion and amend it. I think we need to be a little bit more clear okay. on what we're we're expecting here. If I've understood the the other board members. Um, I'm going to make a motion that the convention center look at finding a way to be able to have fields to work with Braden River uh, Soccer Club um, and to come back to us with suggestions in that regard so that we can try and move forward and have both. Uh, the seconder does not agree with the change. Okay, then y'all make a motion. I'm, I'm simply I'm saying good. that because I don't really understand what you're asking our conventioner and visitor bureau to do. Do you mean at Premier Sports? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh, I, isn't that what, what we're talking about? Well, it wasn't yeah. clear in I'm your sorry. motion. I'm sorry. Shall I take it? Forget it. I'll do it again. Okay. Okay. That we request the Braden, uh, Bradenton Area Convention Center look at the fields at Premier okay. to figure out how to be <coughs> able to help with the Braden River Soccer Club having fields to use there as well when needed. All right, I'll agree with that, but I, I ha I'll agree with it for the seconder. But what it says, and I'm going to read this from the contract that the means that they can cancel any time. So modification of field use period. The parties acknowledge and agree that due to the nature of soccer practice and game, the field use period may be changed, modified, or canceled at any time. Chargers shall cooperate with PSC to rotate the use of the fields among various age groups, blah, blah, blah. While PSC will use its good faith effort to have fields available for use by the Chargers. The Chargers understand and agree that certain large events may require exclusive use of the facility and such uses have priority over the Chargers use of the facility there under. PSC shall immediately inform the charges such a change or cancellation occurs. So that language you're saying allows us to say that this fields are now available for Lakewood Ranch to use. We just, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, that, can I, I ask the, the attorney to, to, to say yes, that's well, what that means? That language says that at any time I can now tell Lakewood Ranch that the, the um, Braden River Club, excuse me. Braden That's River Club. specific for tournaments, it. so out of town tournaments, yeah, tournaments. So, what Braden River Soccer Club and the Chargers have in common is they practice during the week, um, like 
two to three fields at night. We only have eight lit. So again, it's always nighttime practice. And then weekends, they have their recreational games or their academy games. Um, if there is fields available on the weekends, absolutely. We'd love that Braden would practice there or play there. I think the issue is the practices at night, not enough lit fields throughout the county is becoming the issue. Yeah, okay. Well, I've second this motion, but I'm not going to support it. I really think this needs and to be continued for a bigger, a bigger discussion because you're telling me Sarah, that what this is it that you're looking to see though help me because i you expect i i'm not sure I that i understand where to, you're coming to from grant a to approve this contract for five years that gives them the priority use the priority use i'll put it that way of these fields for five years moving forward and to the exclusion of other clubs which i think it does that's what concerns me when we have another club saying, look, we're having a hard time finding places to do this. We had to turn people away. We have to, you know, and, and I've heard it not just from Braden River, but I've heard it from the okay. Hispanic group. Madam too, Chair, so. I agree with what your statement there is, but is that, I mean, what are we looking for the convention center, in your opinion, to come back with? That's the issue. That's, uh, help me here. Okay. What, what I would like to know is a bigger picture. This contract, what does it do to the other soccer clubs that want to use it? We've heard from Braden River. I mean, yes, Braden River. We haven't heard from others. Um, I, supply and demand. I don't know what the supply and demand answer is. We've got an exclusivity for the Chargers. I get it. No, they no, had it no, before. You don't. All right. No. no, we don't. They can... At any time, we can tell them they really can't play okay. on these fields. <laughs> and Madam Chair, on that note, I mean, this I contract is clear that it's a non-exclusive usage. Madam Chair, I think we can keep discussing this over and over again. I think that we want more information, period. That's what so I want. So with what the chairman just said, I totally agree with it, and I'd like that to come back to us with more information on the 25th. To go with your original, your original motion, right? That I originally yeah. seconded. Yes, ma'am. Do you guys understand that? To bring this back <laughs> on the twenty fifth with more information. A bigger picture on what does the contract do to other clubs who would like to use the fields, added to the original motion of. Motion that Civic Center, Bradenton Convention Civic Center work at finding a way to be able to have <laughs> to have the ability to, to work with Braden River Soccer Club and come back to us with options. Well, that was a modified motion. That was a modified motion. <clears throat> that was not the original motion, but uh, I guess once it gets modified it goes away, huh? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had three different motions. I know. I know. I'm lost too, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Might I suggest that all motions that are on the table right now be, be withdrawn? Pulled. Okay. And let's give it a fresh new try. Okay. All motions are withdrawn. Would anyone like to make a motion for continuance? You know what? I, I don't know if I want to touch it again. <laughs> I have something um, to say. I don't want to make a motion. Okay. Uh, Mickey, I, am I think sure. you are? Uh, it's wife? really hard to tell. <laughs> Mickey, then that was Commissioner Baugh, then it was Sherry, then Commissioner Trace. I don't know who I'm all, off now. Who all still wants to talk. All right. Commissioner Baugh, did you have anything? Um, well, I, I think that we're all interested in the same, well, most of us, in the same thing that we're trying to find here. It's just a matter of putting the motion together that would uh, suffice. And Mickey, you are the county attorney, and you've sat here and you've listened to what we've said of what our thoughts are and what we're interested in. Perhaps you could help in that regard. Well, the Lee says that, that is before us today. Obviously, we perfect don't want contract. to move forward with here's it. Here's my impression of what the board's attempting to do. Um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, you want to revisit this contract on the 25th. As it stands right now, there's been no instruction either to staff or to the county attorney's office to modify uh, the terms of this contract in any way. Um, but it's clear that you also want staff to sit down with the Braden River Soccer Organization to determine a way in which 
that that league can potentially use this facility in harmony and in coexistence with the Chargers and in a way that coexists with the terms of this contract. And so I think you want staff to sit down, talk with the Braden River Soccer Group, and come back two weeks hence with some recommendations that will allow both that plan of action to move forward as well as the approval of this contract. What I heard the chairman say. And so if I have misunderstood, then I've misunderstood. Um, Madam Chair, I think since I'm still on the floor, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what we're trying to say is we want to put a hold on approving this lease today that's come before us to give staff time to give us more information on how doing this, uh, how if we approve this lease, what it does to the other soccer teams that are out there, are we hindering the other teams in some way? Well, I think we're that, saying the same thing in, 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 in you know, in, in, in different said, ways. Um, Just not know, meeting the, with the, a specific organization. The, 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 question that, the question that begs is whether or not the county said. can enter into this contract as it is presently written, but at the same time, Accommodate, accommodate um, Other the, the desires of Mr. Moriarty's organization. Um, I think that it seems to me that that is the that that's the question that's on the table, and so. Uh, with all due respect, I would just say other clubs in the community. Thank you. Be, be very broad that's with that. And that, and that was my intent. As, yes, as not well as other soccer organizations. Yes. Yeah, yes. We don't, we, yes. We're not giving any direction to change this agreement. We're asking for a bigger picture look at the demand for soccer and how we're meeting that. Would anyone like to make a motion to that effect, or do you want me to hand the gavel so to... So move. <laughs> uh, Jesus. So the motion was... To bring back on February 25th a bigger picture look at the demand for soccer facilities throughout the county and how that how this contract fits into that demand for soccer facilities in Manatee County. Is that your motion? I just need to talk this out. Go ahead. <clears throat> Well, if we're going to continue to talk, I'm going to take a break. Go to lunch. If we're going to continue this till after lunch, Good I'd idea. like to finish before we. I mean, and, and, and be then done. I'm going to leave, and I'm going to turn the gavel over to because I am not going to miss Kiwanis again for this <laughs> for the second time in a row because we work through lunch. It's not happening for me. Woo! Because there is a something that I need to be there for. So. But what if we have to? Pull you're, third, you're third chair, right? I'm second, second chair. chair. Second chair. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Um. So before. Can I let's do it speak? right quick. I can't. I can't the, the, this motion is going to pass, so let's. I, I call the question on that motion. Well, do you it's know what the motion is? I was the say. motioner has never said they agreed with the language I read. <laughs> Excuse well, me, I did. I said so moved. Yeah, let's Steve so, make a motion. Make a motion, I, I Steve. Oh, so I'm the motion's been now. made. Make a motion, Steve. It. Can you read the motion, please? <laughs> oh my care. gosh. Okay. All right. Never I won. Then the. Does the motioner um, withdraw their motion? Yeah. Okay. So can she can't I, read it. All right, Steve, do you have a motion you said? I would, yes, I'd like to make a motion that we continue this discussion till the 25th, at which time staff will come back to us and give us the details behind what the supply and the demand for soccer is here in Manatee County. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Um, anyone like to address this motion? We already did that, I thought. No, we not did this not. Motion, this is didn't. a new motion. Oh, okay. So, and we have a motion and a second. We already denied your motion. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. All those, um, anyone who want to address this? Seeing no one come forward, I'm going to close public comment. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All right, the motion passes four to two. All right, is there any other? Oh, okay. Sorry. Right? Is there any other business to come before the board? All right. Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. No, it's not going to say you just go below it. Yes. <laughs>